Yeah. All right. Hello, Hollison. Welcome to the uh, February 8th, 2024 uh, meeting of the Hollison School Committee. Uh, we will call the meeting to order at uh, 710. Apologies uh, for, for being a tad late. Um, and uh, to start the meeting, I will accept a motion to accept the consent agenda. Moved by John. I record. I require a second. Second. Second by Sarah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. The, for the record, that carries five to zero. Um, we will now move right along to a uh, report from our student reps. So for some sports updates, the girls indoor track were the TVL at large champions and the TVL overall champions. Um, and then, yes. All right. Congratulations to them. And then boys indoor track um, placed third in TBL. Uh, gymnastics were also the TBL champs. And Holliston Medway Swim and Dive are the second in their TBL. And then the student directed one acts um, occurred over the weekend and they were very entertaining. Um, so with the start of the new semester, we always have an open house where parents can come and meet their as a kids' new teachers. Um, so the second semester open house is this coming Thursday, and that's going to be helped run by the juniors who are currently in um, NHS. Um, with clubs, Science Olympiad was invited to the Harvard Undergraduate Invitational Science Olympiad, and they had two top 20 placements, which is really exciting. And then Academic, academic Decathlon had 25 top five placements in their most recent competition. And then the Senior Class Gala is March 23rd um, at Hopkins Country Club, and all proceeds go to support the class of 2024's post-grad celebration. Okay, uh, school committee comments. Uh, I have not. Sarah. Uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to the sixth grade. Um, they did a, they had presentations and fundraising ideas. They had all the sixth grade kids come up with fundraising ideas and I made it a contest. So we got to judge the presentations and I don't know if they the, the winner yet, but they had some really cute, great fundraising ideas. Mm -hmm. And they are raising money. They've read um, A Long Walk to Water, was the, the novel that the whole sixth grade has read. And um, they are raising money for an organization, I believe, that's called Water for South Sudan. So um, it, was, it was great. The kids did a really good job. So thank you to Ms. Clifton, Ms. Bick, and Mrs. Ditto, I think, uh, organized that. And it was, it was very good. Um, I just have one thing. I, um, after our presentation from Parks and Rec regarding the flag property last meeting, I met with um, Mark Frank and Shannon Cornwell to just kind of discuss their proposal and their ideas around that space um, that is under the care and custody of the school committee. And we just talked about how we want to continue this conversation about how we can best use that space for the benefit of the RAM students and the greater community, um, reflecting you know all the work that the students have put in in terms of their recommendations of what, what they would like to see for their space as a you know an outdoor space, an outdoor learning space as well. Um, so I'm hoping to you know catch up and meet with them more in, as we move forward and want to move forward. And I know that that presentation looked like a finished product to my kind of undrained eye, but it by no means is, um, is what they assured me. And because um, I expressed some concerns about some of the things that I think that we could see more than others. Um, and it also is part of a larger plan that they're discussing around other field space and other um, pr proposals for the town. For example, tennis courts, more tennis courts at Goodwill that would allow for our teams to be able to have, you know, to host for like the first time ever, which would be awesome. So um, anyway, the hope is that we would continue this conversation in the hopes of having a capital request for town meeting to go for architectural plans, things like that. And then at that point, we'd be able to have you know, something to choose from about, you know, that which the community can weigh in on as well. So did you have something to? Yeah, can I just add that? Yeah. I think I brought it up when they, because I didn't know they were going, coming with the presentation either, but yeah, the concern that I brought to them when we met last spring and the feedback I gave was wanting to make sure that during the day, and I told the students this too, this would be a school space yeah. set off from the public, mm -hmm. and then after hours becomes a community. I, I do still worry that while we want to have aesthetics, 
but safety is of a concern yeah. and not blocking off at all also makes me right like I talked about well how also. I really yeah. felt that we needed to have a fence along Linden Street because that's a you know that's a that's going to become a corridor so we need to have you know so there's more conversation that needs to happen but I think we're all moving in the same direction with our community partners and I think that that's the direction that we need to go in at this point um, and that's the hope and obviously I'll be bringing back updates as we continue to discuss it so with David Jordan and everybody else so so is the idea at Goodwill Park of expanding the tennis courts are they expanding them into the existing basketball court? I don't I'm, I'm guessing yes but I didn't uh, get into the okay. that part of that piece of it but it was mm -hmm. more of a broader discussion around how they see that space be, becoming a space that we can use and then you know the, the reason why the basketball courts that they were looking at but again everything nothing is set in stone we're all still talking about what the needs are but also re respecting all the work that's gone in from the admin team to the students who also had a lot of input into what they're looking to see in that space so anyway hopefully to move that forward because it's been a long time I mean I think the kids that actually did their projects were last year's graduating class is that right David Jordan yeah yeah Jonah Feldman's class yes I mean, yes it was, thank Jonah you Jonah was one of the people that presented yes yeah yes. that's what I remember Sounds yes good. okay so I'm you know so it's way overdue is what I would say so anyway that's my Great long and short <laughs> Um, just very briefly, I attended a MASC seminar. Um, I wasn't able to attend, do the live one, but we, the recordings become available to us. Um, and it was on Proposition Two and a Half overrides. And Sarah, is that did, yeah. you did as well? Um, so the Massachusetts School Committee Association put this on, and they had advertised it as more and more districts are finding themselves in very tight budget seasons this year. So they did a special presentation on um, Prop Two and a Half overrides, uh, successes, failures, uh, next steps, all of that information was very informative. Um, in addition, I had reached out and spoken with um, Tracy Novick uh, about coming in and potentially doing an MASC presentation for us on school finance and Chapter 70, di you know, distribution formulas, all of that. So be in touch about potential dates. It's amazing the problems the budgets have when you have three to four percent inflation in a prop two and a half world. Um, two things don't don't jibe. Uh, I don't have any individual comment at this time. Um, so now we have an opportunity for the public to uh, address us. And I realize that you are all here for other reasons, but if you'd like a, 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 an extra opportunity, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> to, to prolong the meeting. Um, so, <laughs> so seeing seeing none, uh, we will move on to our presentations. And uh, the first one will be the mid-year goals. That, that is the, the principles, right? Yes. Yep. The mid-year goals update uh, from Central Admin and the principles. Okay. I'll move. I want you to come on here. Thank you. Okay. Were you coming over next to me? Oh. <laughs> but you could though, Keith. The camera still reaches right there. No, they get through. Yes, we need. Get it up on the screen. Susan? Yes. Can you bring me? Good evening, everyone. Hello. Long time no see. Yeah. And what do you need? 12 hours. Exactly. Yeah. I'll, I'll walk. <coughs> arches for the district and then um, four arches for each of the buildings so we took the same format but we put the mid-year updates in the slides differently we also um, if you look at the first slide for the district and then there's a the first slide for Miller and each school we linked in and the document that you should have in your folders as well but those documents have the actual um, work that they've done in each column so you have the, the more detail 
in there. So we'll walk you through that, and I think it might be best if I can go through the four slides for the goals for the district level, and then have questions after that section, and then maybe for each administrator as they go through their four-ish slides, right? Does that work? Okay. okay. All right, so you always have our links to the mission, vision, and uh, global, I mean, our objectives and core values. So this is the link that I mentioned if you want to uh, pull up the detail in the presentation, but you should have that separately. So at the district level, under ARCH-1 communication practices, these are some of the things that we've accomplished already this year or increased our capacity with. We have really ramped up using Dibble Star and our ready data to make sure we're um, communicating to families. You'll see the principals talk specifically about how they've done that at each building level. But as a district, we've really been trying to communicate out how the assessment data is helping to move and plan initiatives in tier one, two, and three. The tech department has taken the program of studies and moved it all. We had a lot of external sites. And the problem with those external sites is when you went to those, they weren't translatable. So we really made a concerted effort the last couple of years to move everything over that was external. And thank you to the tech department for all the work on that. So this was a huge migration to the website. And hopefully that means now every language we'll be able to translate very easily through final site. Health Office has also done their own communication platform to try to expand work on, you know, that social emotional well-being as well as physical wellness is so important. So they've really done an expansion of communication through the website as well. The staff portal was also external, if I'm not mistaken, Dan, when, um, up until recently. So we've taken the staff portal as well and moved that into our, our final site website. And now the staff can go in and get every PD agenda. So if they have to renew their license, you have to show what PD you've taken over the years. So we, they can pull up all the old agendas for the last couple of years. It's just a nice place to access everything. Because we all are supposed to be keeping our logs related to licensure, but it's a lot easier if you forget to be able to go in there as well. Power School. All of our families have now access pre-K to 12 to um, student platforms in Power School and then also the new special programs. I know Jess can speak to that further if you have questions for her, but it's been a, a, a lot of work to get all of that transferred over from IEPs, but also the ELL students. The biggest part, I think, for us is having that, not only the accessibility, but to be able to docu-sign in the program. It was a huge undertaking to try to get people to sign off on IEPs and get communication, and this helps us immensely with that. So moving forward, it's really going to be more efficient. The next area we've talked about a lot, and Joni's not here tonight, unfortunately. She's sick, but I know we're going to be doing a curriculum update later, um, probably at the next meeting or the one after. But we took all of the stage one documents are all on the website, and we continue to add to those. And then when we get into the stage two, some of them are already done. Some of them are going into stage three. As they update those, that will not be on the website. It's just the stage one that you'll see for parents, but the staff will have access to all of it. Then uh, earlier in the fall, there was a digital safety presentation created, and then in-person sessions were offered on all buildings. This, again, is our, our technology department doing an immense effort to try to get all of this information up to staff. We see so much with cybersecurity threats. We continue to try to be um, proactive in those areas. <coughs> Social emotional well-being. I, I walked you through, I think it was the end of last year, the website and all the changes that Jerry L and others have put on our safe and supportive schools. And you'll see some of those links will take you to other parts of the website as well. We have you linked up in multiple places. We're continuing with the Metro West surveys, so this year at the middle school and the high school, um, and then in the spring we'll take that information and get the report out to, I'm sure, um, Jerry L will be communicating a lot of that work and what our next steps are. Ruler has been launched, K-8, to and again, if you have specific questions, we have talked a little bit about Ruler before, but if you had specific questions, it's been a lot of work with all the buildings so far and the implementation. I think staff are excited about it, and I know that Jerry could go into more in-depth information about that process as well. But I, I do think, in general, the staff are pretty excited about moving in that direction. So PD is happening at all of those levels. We've talked a number of times and communicated out to families and staff about the Sandy Hook Anonymous Reporting System. We've already had some um, reportings that allow us to investigate whether it's on the weekend, after hours. Um, we actually had something this weekend came out and it actually went to Mr. List and it was something that should have gone to the police. It turned out not to be a, a, a serious threat, but 
the process for, it, it, we're still tweaking that process so that the right people get that communication, but we've never had a system like this implemented before, so just to have another system that's available 24 hours with someone answering a phone call or an email in an emergency and be able to send them off to the right place and determine whether it's an immediate threat that needs to be investigated or if it's something that the counselors or the principal could deal with in the morning and they'll, they'll get that out to us. So it's, the kids have been very responsive to it. I feel like the middle school level and the high school level when I've talked to them just like that there's one more place to put information if you want to be anonymous and reporting things. Data dashboard. We talked about this during the rankings discussion, how one of the things that we're lacking is to have a data dashboard because when I showed you those slides that we, we put together with Dan, myself, uh, Jody Renee and, and Joni, it took us a ton of times. So we just don't have a system that can really synthesize that and put it together in a meaningful manner. So while we got it for you, to be able to get those reports done in real time and get information out to people and then use that to make our intervention and progress monitoring would be much more helpful. So we've already looked at, I think, now our fourth third or fourth program. So we're getting close to choosing a data dashboard for next year. Money is always an issue, so we're trying to find grant funds to do so. So I'm hopeful if you stay tuned, we'll have updates on a program that we're going to be able to bring in with grant funds, because I think that's really a way that we can take all the things that we're trying to accomplish and assess them in real time and move the district forward. Care solace. Um, you, again, you see that in all of our communications, our counselors send out. You'll see it in our, uh, our CSA emails. That care solace program, I get monthly updates from them as well about all of the calls that they get. Again, real time, people looking at these things and getting it to the right person and making sure that while it's still hard to get mental health care, they are much more streamlined than we are able to do on our own. So this is this program has been very successful for us, and I'd say much more successful than the one that we had prior to this as well. Leslie University, again, this is, I have to give kudos to Jariel again. He's brought in these um, trauma courses through Leslie University. I mean, the cost is amazing. We're able to provide this for our district and have 25% of our educators are signing up for these courses, and again, this is something Gerald can tell you the exact courses if you have specific questions about, but the fact that 68 staff members have gone through these trauma trainings and can bring this into their classroom, it's not on top of what they're doing, they're embedding it into the work that they're already doing in class, but just to have these other tools and skills for our general educators and our support staff is amazing. We're working with students. Again, this is some of the work that Jerry Ellen specifically has been doing with some of the, the staff, at the, the counseling staff, trying to find as many peer leadership opportunities throughout the district, and I think David can talk about some of that at the high school as well when he talks through his slides. And as you know, um, we recently gave an update on the Equity Steering Committee, and that work is ongoing. Jerry had a very successful meeting. Actually, he had the second meeting just recently, so you can probably give us a, a little hint about that. But the group that he's put together is amazing, and I'm excited to get some recommendations from that group that we could move forward with. As always, I'm going very fast, so please slow me down if you have something. But if we can do the questions after Arch Floor, that'd be great. So I know we've updated this um, in conversations in past meetings as well. We've done the pre-K to 12 math and secondary ELA curriculum reviews are ongoing this year. Year two for math and year one for ELA at secondary. We're also doing the science, world language, and primary ELA curriculum groups are just beginning. Um, it's a lot of work, and we've talked about this before. We're trying to play catch up since we haven't done a lot of this work since 2011-12. Um, so we are behind. So the fact that we've been able to do this much in the, in the short amount of time of the last year or two is amazing. But sometimes we say you have to go slow to go far, and I don't want us to be going too fast that we can't keep up the volume as well. So we keep tweaking and thinking about uh, is this something we can slow down a little bit so that we don't push too far and then lose the progress that we're trying to establish. The curriculum reviews. Every time they meet, are talking about vertical and state alignment, and they're also trying to bring in bias, equity, inclusive, inclusivity, and diversity. You heard the presentations on the equity audit in October. I still think we need to have some more conversations. I know that the steering committee is going to be giving us recommendations about what they are going to suggest to us to focus on. But I think there's going to be some other areas that we've already talked about that also connect with the NEAS report that we'll be looking into as well course offerings. 
this is something that we've talked about leveling and, and different courses that we should be having. And my recommendation at, I think, two meetings ago was that I really think if we want to do this well, we really need to get that data dashboard in place and be looking at the long-term data because what we don't have is a way of looking back and forward and trying to progress from where we are. Um, I know that one of the things that the equity report had suggested was that we actually de-level at the middle school, and I don't think we should make any changes right now. I think we really should stick with what we have and use next year to kind of kick off from where the equity audit gets us and the recommendations there, and then determine if we're going to either add or take away levels. Next year would be a perfect time to try to ease into that and make sure the staff have the training to adjust one way or the other. Where else am I? Okay, course offerings, quick review. Um, Miller is using the landmark model, and I'm going to let Mr. Kime speak to that a little bit. When you get to that slide, would you like to? <laughs> I'll let Jess talk to it because yeah. she's been working with the special ed staff. Yeah, I just yeah, didn't sorry. know if you already had another slide. I didn't want to bring it up again nope. if you already have another slide on it. Nope. And then Orton Gillingham, um, that was in our priority needs discussion. Jess has done a great job, and Kelly Camp before her. We've got so many staff trained on Orton Gillingham and continuing to get that up to grade eight. That's where I think we're putting our, um, our most emphasis. But when we've had some turnover, making sure that as new staff come in, we continue to bring in Orton Gillingham or those new staff as well so that all students have access to that multisensory reading approach. Mr. McLeod has been working with the AI Steering Committee, and I know he's doing a quick update tonight on the progress that they've made. I think the, the problem with the work that they're doing, they're very excited and want to push forward with all this, these initiatives, and it's great, but again, we have to be mindful of what we can take on right now. So he's going to give you some things in meaningful, meaningful chunks that we probably can take on either this year or going into next year. But his enthusiasm was very, when we, we talk about it, he's very enthusiastic with the team. But look at all the other things we're doing, too, so we really have to take these in, in bits and pieces. However, the things that AI can do for us, if we can focus on the positive versus the, you know, the negative and make sure we're implementing things with fidelity and training people about how they should be using them and then not be using them, I think it's worth getting ahead of it than staying behind the curve on AI. And then vision of a graduate, we've been working on that for a few years, but we've struggled to get that as a pre-K to 12 mindset. <laughs> Last year we did do some training um, and it had the high school administration go out to the other buildings, but I think we need to sort of embrace that and, and embed it in the work that we're already doing, it, and it's not an add-on, but the high school is not where vision of a graduate starts. It starts in preschool all the way up and making sure that kids understand that and teachers understand that as well is important. And I mentioned already the dashboards in the previous slide. Where are we with our talent and resources? We do have a lot of um, absences, either during just normal school days with illnesses, but PD days as well. Um, you know, it's something I want to work on and try to make sure that we're, if we have PD and staff aren't able to make it, that we're trying to record things and put it on the website and share it out. And also when new staff come in, if it's a training we've done in the past, to have it available for them is very important. It's when can they watch it. You know, it, unfortunately, right now, they'd have to watch it on their own time. We just don't have enough time built in as we're doing new PD. But things that we're doing well, we want to continue to share out with staff. The building liaison role. Jess Beattie's been meeting regularly with the building liaisons that we implemented this end of the summer going into the fall when we kept seeing our paraprofessional struggles of hiring the number of paraprofessionals we needed. It's not the be all and end all, but it definitely has served a useful purpose so that when new people are coming in, they have a person to go to and we continue to grow their capacity at each building so that they also then reach out to often just BD if they have questions and then they can steer the team. So it at least is another presence in the building if the principals are unavailable or the assistant principal to have someone that's a peer is, is I think a really helpful um, partial solution to that problem. Capital updates. Um, we work very closely with the town administrator, as you know, and our budget sub to work on getting our capital updates coordinated through the town administrator. Um, we're probably getting close to the time where we want to invite him to one of our budget sub meetings to talk about that further. Um, as you know, we'll be moving forward um, at the next meeting with hopefully a budget um, recommendation. I'd like some more input before we do that because I think there's just a lot going on right now. We did talk about priority needs at both capital and um, regular budgetary needs. 
that I really would like your support or guidance as to which ones you'd like us to try to move forward because we know that we did have some challenges financially at the town level this year going into FY25. We are voting tonight on the MSBA SOI application, or at least I think we will be voting. I've shared the language for you. And then I would be sending that over to a vote for the select board as well and getting the application updated with any. One of the things that we sent to MSBA in this past round was the facilities report that was done um, through James Keyes at the town. So they had that as part of our application process, but it wasn't uploaded into the system. So anything that wasn't already uploaded will be uploaded as part of this process. And if there's anything else we can think of to add to the application, we certainly will. But I think we had a very strong application this last go round. And unfortunately, it just wasn't our time financially with the, the competing towns that put in for um, SOI applications. Under teaching and learning, the curriculum team has really done a nice job doing, um, I think they're doing them bi-monthly newsletters going out because what we were finding is at the district level, um, the central office team does our um, quarterly newsletters. We're doing them by season. And then we were sending so much out. Again, we're trying to communicate so much and they look lovely, but then I worry about people's capacity to take it all in. So now we're trying to do uh, some smaller bits along the way because on top of what I'm sending out, and what the curriculum coordinators and, and Joni Menard are sending out, principals are sending out daily, if not um, weekly, if not daily communications. So there's a lot going on. And if there's more efficiencies we can develop with communication, um, I think for me it's about trying to maybe put headers on different sections and then people might select the parts that they can take in. And if it doesn't interest them, they'll ignore that. But there's a lot happening um, on a regular basis and it's hard to keep up with the, the news coming out. Ready work. Um, both Jariel and I have been attending as a team the racial equity, diversity, and inclusion work through mass superintendents. It's been a really useful group that we've been attending. I'm trying to think we did a, a full day in the fall, Jariel, help me with that, and then we're doing um, bi monthly meetings with them. We're meeting with, there are seven or eight, eight districts, and it's our we, uh, Javiel's role is director of SEL and equity, but many districts have DEI directors, so the superintendents and their team are coming together because what we hear more and more and what's so important is that one person can't own the diversity and equity work that we're doing in the communities that we are working in. So sometimes it's the superintendent's voice that needs to be the loudest voice in making sure that I'm getting enough information from Jerry Ellen can help support him in that work because he can certainly not do this alone and we all own that responsibility and that's the message that we keep getting when we attend these um, state level meetings. So I did that in about 10 minutes, something like that, no, a little more. Um, so I'm going to pause there before we go on to the high school and feel free to ask questions since I ran through that at, who's the, uh, Yosemite Sam, or who's the one that, the uh, Roadrunner, like the Roadrunner. Any questions? Let's move on. So if you talk fast, they don't have questions. That's the lesson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> holding, holding, holding fire. No, it makes sense because they're going to hit the same topics as we go through as well. All right, I'm going to move on to the high school, and their document is also linked up with more details. Uh, so, um, as I said when I started seven months ago, the uh, biggest thing I heard was communication from the high school and an understanding of what's happening, um, how things are happening, what's going on with the students, and so we've really worked hard to uh, make sure that we're communicating thoroughly about everything that's happening through school counseling um, and just just the events that are happening at the high school. Um, very thankful to Sarah Kuhn and Dan for their work on moving the program of studies over to the website. We're working on revamping um, the entire uh, sort of high school space uh, online to try to make it easily accessible. Um, it's very confusing right now. Um, and along with that, um, looking at the uh, working with the admin team to really uh, review the whole eight to nine transition as well and communicating that piece out. So we're starting it a little later than we'd like to, but we're trying to sort of recreate everything so that it's, it's an understandable process, um, what the school offers, what's going to be happening at the high school for students. Um, 
we've created a, team, uh, a group for new students uh, and new families. Uh, Leslie Diamandis is running an advisory group for new students uh, to support them through their transitions, because in speaking with families and students coming in, that, that was a difficulty, you know, sort of transitioning to what does it mean to be Holliston High School student uh, coming into a small community. Um, and trying to offer as many opportunities for parents to come in, and I'll say it here, like every time I send one out, please come in, because um, I don't get as many as I'd like to, but it's, uh, it's, it's great when folks are joining us. We're averaging about a dozen people at the coffees, but um, love to have more folks come in and share. Um, and the uh, equity audit and the NEASC report, which I shared earlier, also talked a, a lot about um, our communication practices and making, especially um, in the uh, with the school counseling, um, and making sure that uh, folks feel comfortable with what's happening in the high school and their in their student experience. Um, social emotional um, well being. <clears throat> Uh, we we uh, are working on year two of the uh, partnership with the EDC, um, working with uh, teachers to really get some data about student experience at the high school. Um, we're doing a lot of work around relationship mapping, which is understanding um, teacher connections to students um, and seeing where we're missing the boat, um, asking teachers to reflect on uh, each of the students in their class um, and in different activities, clubs, sports, uh, and trying to understand if there are students that are falling through the cracks uh, that, we, that we aren't engaging with. Um, um, and so we're trying to pull together all of that data, um, work to reimagine the advisory program. Um, today, um, we had um, Dr. Eliza Toulousen in um, to do some leadership training with the SALs, um, working, uh, thankfully, HDAC partnered with us to bring her in. Um, it, was, it was a really great experience. Uh, Jerry L was able to join us. Um, uh, at the training as well. Um, and so we're trying to do as many of those opportunities as possible. Um, also uh, revamping um, the, we have a community service class, but we also will have um, the, the, the state requirement um, for the civic engagement project and looking that through some social emotional connections for students there as well, um, and getting that into um, the, the high school program. Um, we are also reimagining inter the intervention. That's the when the student is identified by a teacher. Um, what supports do we have for them? Trying to, to figure those pieces out, um, and we will be. Um, piloting um, the IXL program that's more teaching and learning, but also is a, a, a support that we can provide to students, and we'll be piloting that. Um, we were originally going to start uh, next year, but this happening in the eighth, it's happening in middle school, um, and so students will come up having that experience working with us. We want to continue that um, in through the high school. Um, we're bringing, again, partnering with HDAC, uh, doing some work with an organization called Think Fast um, uh, for students uh, that are uh, more to do with substance abuse, um, working, trying to bring in Hidden in Plain Sight, um, which is another group for, that uh, works with students and in, in, in with parents and students in substance abuse as well, um, and also Challenge Day uh, as a program. And as um, uh, Susan said, the Metro West Health Survey um, and Mood Check um, with uh, Dr. Tracy Gladstone, which has been going on on here for at Halston High School for a while. Um, I will say that also Sandy Hook Promise has been um, a great tool for us. Um, you know, we, we had to deal with Sunday night, but you know, we're learning as Susan said, but um, we've, we've gotten to be, we've been able to support some students who, who I don't think otherwise would have gotten support because it's, it really is an anonymous reporting system um, that was able to identify students. And I don't think it's been as invasive as we were afraid. You know, just when it is, we're tapping our administrators after hours, we, we try to minimize that as much as possible. So we're, we want to make sure the calls aren't getting to the right place. All right. I mean, they don't want to be here every night. Well, they do, but. Yeah. I'd rather be at the basketball game than answering those false calls. <laughs> Smiling. You guys have to be frown a little more. Why do you want to do much? Uh, so the, the, teaching, the teaching and learning, we are um, really going through curriculum reviews across the board. Um, I, um, the wellness department's up there because they have completely brand new standards for the state, so they're revamping the entire wellness curriculum. They're working on that. Um, the counselors are going to be starting small group workshops um, with students. Um, one of the challenges of our schedule, obviously, is finding time to do that in there, uh, but they're going to make it work. Um, time to work with juniors on preparing for you know college uh, you know, just some time with them, a college process, some freshmen on some uh, thinking about their their uh, journey through the high school. So they're going to start those in small groups with their counselors. So they'll get some face to ensure students get face time with their counselors um, throughout the year. Um, again, um, with STAR doing um, IXL. 
um, working on that to support students there. Um, we've been working a lot to sort of align course expectations and what's happening in courses and really parent communication um, so that they can understand what's happening within teaching and learning. Um, looking at the vision of a graduate, um, the uh, Curriculum coordinators are, are um, aligning those with the units of study. Um, and at our PD on half day on Monday, um, we're going to be creating the rubric uh, that teachers can use uh, to actually say, here's how they've engaged in this part of the vision of the graduate in this unit, um, to then be able to, at the end, the goal is at the end, by the time senior year rolls around, that a student would have a portfolio, basically, of, of areas how they've achieved um, each of the ICANN statements within the vision of a graduate. It. So um, that work will start on Monday and hopefully be able to implement next year um, for students when they when they finish, a, well, not only when they finish a unit, but when they finish a course, you would get your grade, obviously, but also um, a parent and a student would be able to see where they where they fall in, in being proficient in the, the skills and the, the statements within the vision of a graduate. David, can I interrupt you for just one second? Mm -hmm. Within that discussion, is there a part of that about you know, allowing for more voice and choice for kids in the program of studies to the extent possible? What do you, what, in terms what, of the vision of a graduate and allowing for more voice for students? In, in, in their, on like in course their offerings? Yes, or in, in course offerings. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think that, ha yeah, I mean, th this, I mean, we have tons of different courses that are offered, but I think that's a piece of, of anything that we build has to be student voice mm -hmm. um, and choice in there. Um, but I, I would say that we have a lot of student choice now. I think there, as we've talked about before, there are a lot of, um, because of the schedule and what students take, there are some sort of struggles with that. But um, I think we offer it. The schedule may not allow it right now, but it exists. I would say. Like, does that make sense? It, yes. it exists, but it's not accessible necessarily at all. Right. So that, that's, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, so yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. Um, but the other part of that is that we're also partnering with organizations like Project Lead the Way um, to um, bring in sort of pathways curriculums for students mm -hmm. so that they can really, if they're interested in a certain area, they can go after as a biomedical business, mm -hmm. um, engineering, um, really working with PLTW to do that, um, and then uh, uh, we'll be applying for the Innovation Pathways grants where the state supports these type of pathways. Um, with, with, with generous grants if we get them to be able to um, all the, the supplies and materials necessary to, to really develop them. And as a part of those, our capstone projects, 500-hour uh, internship, like we have internships, but these are more expansive um, internships that students would get access to um, through the program and more. And for students who may not be interested in going to college, more access to um, work programs. Um, and our counselors just went through a training, which is called MyCap, um, which it, it's, uh, it is basically an all-inclusive program for social emotional learning, for um, uh, career inventories, um, and it's run through the state. So it's a state program that's, uh, that's offered to all schools. So um, there are three training days that are a part of it. So they'll be going to all three, but they just went through their first now. Um, it's also a piece of, uh, when we think about equity in terms of folks who might not be able to afford like a college counselor, um, th this gives a lot of those same resources um, for, for those folks as well. And when would that be accessible to students? Like how and when? That? Next year, we next year. So they're going through the training now, um, and then the other piece. Of this in order to get the innovation pathways grant, you have to have implemented MyCap. Mm -hmm. um, so is that like an email that you can make an appointment with someone, or is it a club after school? No, so it it's a on? no, it's a it's a program. It's a program mm -hmm. on the computer that oh, people okay. folks have access to. It's mm -hmm. in multiple languages. It is. It's really. I mean, we're going to have to do trainings for parents. It's extensive. I mean, it really is. A, it was um, originally created um, as uh, something for uh, really the urban schools. Um, and when you see the value in it, when you see how expansive it is, um, then you realize that really all students should have access to it. So uh, we already have SCORE, which is the, the program um, for students to sort of create their portfolios that you send to colleges. And then um, they have, they'll have MyCap as well. So, and, and parents have access to both of those. But they will next year. So. And that would be all four, all four grades would have access? Or? Yes, the so students start using it in ninth grade. Okay. Um, and they sort of build build it up as they go along. So. Mm -hmm. Before we move on, I did want to point out, because I sat in a, one of your wellness meetings, and we're also, um, he's done a nice job connecting Zoe Moreau from HDAP with the teachers and trying to really support with the community and, um, and 
policy needs and family services are trying to align the work that we're doing has been really helpful too. Um, the, the talent and resources, Arch 4, um, working a lot with Dan to look at the technology resources that we have in the building where, where we need some updates um, and uh, looking at different different labs, different and looking, thinking about student choice and voice is, is really enhancing our our music program through some music technology and, and, our, and our graphic design and cinematography programs. Um, looking at, um, we have a lot of you know new new teachers and so looking at how we support them coming in. So we've been getting a lot of feedback from them on to how we can help them to uh, sort of hit the ground running here. Um, and, and even though they have the new teacher program, how do we do that within the high school? Because they, they sort of look at the overarching piece of the, the district and those ideas, but how do you help them uh, to engage with the school itself? Uh, so I'm spending a lot of time there onboarding staff and I have learned a lot in my first year about what that takes um, and and what's necessary there because I know how much I've had to learn and how many how, how many uh, sort of stumbles I've had just trying to sort of get information so um, I think that's gonna be a big piece for the high school here is to, to keep the same culture but also to help this new staff um, you know we have a, a lot of staff who are you know really under you know five or six years and so making sure that, that, that they get the support they need So, yeah, no, sorry. So, so, David, I, I know last time you were in, we were talking about the NIASC report, mm -hmm. um, and we had a, we had a discussion about the, the schedule. Um, and I just I've been I think that was three weeks ago or something to that. And I've been spending a lot of time thinking about that, and it's sort of stayed on on my mind because there there are a lot of inequities in the schedule, especially for for students that need IEPs. Um, we're on IB, sorry, and have pullout services. Uh, students in our, you know, band and chorus and, and, and arts type programs. And so I just wonder, I mean, we don't necessarily need a, a vote on this, but is there a way to sort of, within the confines of everything that we have and the sort of the structures that we have, um, maybe not like even a change the schedule, but a way we, we uh, look at delivering courses? Are there different options that maybe you could put together and, and show us what it, things might look like and what the, the pros and cons of some of these different near-term solutions as you as you do your greater work uh, to come up with that sort of that long-term solution are there ways that maybe we can solve some of these inequities within a shorter time frame so I think it, I think you're sort of saying like taking the existing schedule and trying to tweak what we already have to make some of the temporary right not changing the schedule not drastically changing no, right. but is there a way to do it in modification and then take maybe next year to do a full right. analysis right. Um, yeah I mean I can bring uh, I mean one of the things that I am I sent out to staff and I met with Stefan was looking at looking at those challenges I could send out to I think I also need to reach out to families like this week I can send that in my my you know in the newsletter this week um, asking about those challenges I don't want to make assumptions uh, that I know all of the challenges that that are facing the schedule and um, want to get some feedback there so from students I would need some time to get some feedback from students and parents just to hear what those challenges are um, and then I then I could give some idea of, of how we might address those um, those specific challenges? Yeah, I, I think that we. I mean, again, I don't want to get away from even looking into what the what the the impacts of, of even those smaller tweaks might be. We still want to be, um, have have some rigor behind that. How that would impact uh, you know teachers, how that would impact the families, students. Um, but I think I don't. I mean, it is a pretty large percentage of students who are on either IEPs and getting services out, you know, that are then not able to avail themselves of DSP or at least some DSP, the the chorus and and uh, band that you know meet during DSP. You know, are there ways that you know to almost sort of strengthen even DSP or at least the usage of it because you're you're not getting all those kids who have a greater access to it. Yeah, I mean, I think that if there was a way to modify what we currently have without making any drastic changes to try to address some inequities right now, knowing that we need to do a much more thorough analysis, I think that's something we could talk about and Absolutely. see yeah. we could come up with. Yeah. All set for high school? Okay. For now, we we'll reserve the right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dr. Jordan. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, uh, excited here. I think this is what this is like my seventh or eighth year doing this. So uh, um, I can go with Arch One. Uh, this I I, I probably will spend the predominance of the time um, talking about uh, some of our efforts with PBIS and Kickboard in Arch Two, actually. Uh, but what I did want to acknowledge in Arch One, as far as communication. Um, recently in our RAMS news that went out um, is that we opened up and it was communicated through there 
uh, Kickboard, which is our PBIS monitoring tool, but also is like positive and kind of our, our consequence-based monitoring, sy monitor, uh, monitoring system uh, opened up to parents on February 1. Um, it was a little bit of a kind of a soft rollout because uh, we were going to hit parents with a significant amount of data on their children. Um, and um, so we wanted to kind of make sure that there, there were, we're going to get a lot of questions about it, uh, make sure that we can kind of handle that flow of questions. But our, our hope is to kind of like ramp up our publicity and marketing with uh, families to get in there. Um, I guess as far as to any of the school committee members who have children in the middle school uh, and then anybody who is uh, listening in, I'd highly encourage you to get in there. I think you're going to see some really fun um, and cool feedback. Um, on your children in there. Um, it is uh, right now we're at a 13 to 1 ratio on average for our kids. So you're going to get there and see um, likely probably like 60 or 70 or 80 comments uh, from each of your, your students' teachers that are positive about different particular situations that they've done in their classroom. So um, we're usually, as families, we, we get the kind of report card, we get the you know anxious every once in a while email that might be negative. Um, I think there's a lot uh, of positive there. Um, and I think there's a lot of opportunity to drive the car conversations with your children at the middle school level that are in there about some of the things they've done in their classrooms. Did you say they parents can't quite access yet? But so they can. No, they can access okay. it now. Yeah, we uh, the, basically the students uh, took home uh, directions on how parents can fill it out, uh, but also in the Rams News we're giving communicate, parents were giving communication on how like if, if the child if that piece of paper does not make its way home, um, which often it doesn't, um, ha what they could do to get another piece of paper and log in. Um, so uh, we're teaching executive functioning by seeing if that paper can make it from point A to point B, but uh, it doesn't often. So, all right, uh, Arch two. Um, so this is kind of our. I would I would say that like. Um, where we've centered the predominance of our focus this year. There are only so many spinning plates you can kind of keep going, and this is the one I'm actively spinning um, right now. Uh, we talked about uh, Kickboard. Kickboard is, um, it is kind of replaces our care points uh, system, but it, it also not just tracks where we are handing cards out, it also tracks like the actual comments on about the actual situation um, and then calculates the ratio and then we can run data um, off of that uh, as well. For example, we have over 16,000 points um, have been given out um, in the short period of time that we've piloted uh, Kickboard. That equals, which we talked about, a 13 to 1 ratio. Um, research is anywhere from like a 7 to 1 or 5 to 1 ratio of kind of positive praise um, to more of a consequence um, action or, or negative behavior. Um, that they would have. Um, that ratio uh, with our partnership um, with an outside consultant with PBIS uh, that we've been working with JRL through is they've been able to run some additional data for us on uh, subgroups um, is that that ratio is similar for students on IEP and students of color um, and our high need students uh, as well. So we're uh, we're balancing and making sure that we don't have any discrepancies uh, in there as well. 100% of our students um, are receiving uh, positive positive praise uh, for there. So there isn't. We're also kind of monitoring uh, volume um, of, and where are kind of our students that are maybe not hearing from their parents or hearing from uh, their teachers and our teachers in their different data groups have been analyzing that to understand to make sure that everybody is making a contact point or has a contact <laughs> point uh, in our building. This is already yielding to date. Uh, whether you know whether it's causal or whether it's correlational, that's one thing. But we are at a 70% 70 70 decrease in suspensions from the prior year, uh, and we're at a multi uh, multi year downward trend uh, in suspensions of the to date uh, point at this point, and we're at a 52 point. 52% uh, decrease in major infractions. These would be things that might yield like an after school detention or other kind of bigger uh, office based um, consequences. Um, 
uh, if you walk into our banner building, you may see like 300 banners kind of all over the place. So we're trying to really get the kind of message and communication out. Um, and that's kind of really following the lead of the elementary schools and the works that work that they've uh, done there. Um, within SEL, uh, kind of moving to that piece and thinking about like our, our MTSS and our, our um, areas that we've been working on, we've done um, three lessons to date that our, our counselor led. That's our intro to SEL, um, school pride contributing to common good, and then benefits of practicing mindfulness. Um, we also have our uh, ADL uh, peer leadership group. Um, they've done... They've created, in partnership with ADL uh, facilitators um, from outside, uh, have been working with the students to um, have them put together lessons that they lead in the classroom. And to date, they've led um, three, uh, three lessons um, that they have led, um, which are, did you bully this burger? Um, here I, this is middle school, um, here I stand and personal dominoes. Um, and that's, um, that is with kind of like the support uh, of the ADL. And as Jerry, Jerry L and I have talked is, you know, we're deeply saddened that ADL is, is no longer going to have that arm um, of them is that peer leadership. And uh, he's been working to kind of see if we can identify some um, outside partnerships to again have a leader. While we feel like we've developed the capacity um, as a middle school to do that work, um, things deviate over time and it's good to continually have an outside person to kind of drive uh, and be that expert, expert uh, in us. Um, similarly, we have our Sandy Hook uh, peer leadership group. Um, they have been doing um, what they've led, they've, they have uh, start with hello is, they, is a, um, a lesson that they have led, student led, uh, affirmation station and I am unique fingerprinting. Um, and then we have our in relate, uh, partnership with the high school is our Project 351 Celtics playbook. Um, and this is uh, about 30 students at the middle school involved with that. Uh, and this is what they've done is leading difficult conversations um, on race, bias, and gender. So basically training um, our students, one, uh, our students um, acknowledging and learning <laughs> about their own bias, but also teaching them to drive difficult conversations with their peers um, as well. Um, lastly, and something that um, has far exceeded what um, I could have ever imagined is our Wellness 2, uh, which is a Tier 2 wellness and SEL support that's uh, built into student schedules. Um, we have over 171 students enrolled uh, in this Tier 2 program. That's, that's a, a, a significant number of students that are receiving social-emotional support that is open to all. Um, so anybody can take that, and, and we put uh, several students who may need that into that space. Uh, but this is a space for students who um, may need some additional social-emotional support, learn about uh, different, different wellness practices that they can benefit, executive functioning, um, that they may need extra physical activity. Um, they, they'll do yoga, mindfulness activities. Um, they'll learn about how to access uh, their day uh, better. Um, and we're using um, Navigate 360, which is outside SEL resource, to kind of help uh, buffer that as we uh, transition over to Ruler. Um, what's awesome about that is uh, that class is the best attendance in our school. Um, and uh, it is also um, Francine Boucher who leads it. Uh, we did our Sandy Hook uh, ARS survey of students as far as who your trusted adults were. Um, Francine was the most trusted adult teacher uh, in our building um, after a very short period of time. I want to say that survey was done in like November um, or something or December. And um, in that very short period of time was identified as our most trusted teacher. Um, I will say the, the, the top friendly. award went to uh, was kind of a tie for um, Kayla, uh, Kayla Smith and um, Angela Gavin, who are two counselor, grade level counselors, who um, were our, our, our kind of top uh, most trusted adults um, in our building. And then on to our next one. 
Um, teaching and learning, um, IXL is our major pilot that we're immersed in, um, and, and based off of our teacher feedback uh, that we've provided to Dan, is that we this is something that we do want to move forward with, uh, and that we do want it to replace STAR ultimately. Um, but uh, we've been very, very happy with what it uh, has been uh, brought to us. Um, several. Three years ago, when we started the STAR process, what, star, what appealed to me with STAR um, was the arm that they had, which was Freckle. Uh, but our, within STAR, um, the initial pitch with STAR was that they had um, some of the Tier 2, Tier 3 academic supports um, and even kind of um, things that once you had the data, you had something you could go do with it. Um, and we struggle with the things that were built into STAR to be able to do that. So we then piloted Freckle uh, the prior uh, last year, and we found that that um, was not what we needed to be. Uh, but that has not been the case with IXL. IXL has been everything we had hoped it would be, could perceive that it could be, um, as kind of creating a customized path for all students. Uh, whether you're an exceptional learner uh, or whether you're a student with gaps, um, it is filling that need uh, and uh, pushing our students in their individual learning path. Um, as I'm, and maybe Dave is going to get into, and I know Susan just spoke to, is kind of our, our literacy pathways or our liter literacy work that we're aligning as a whole district. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about kind of our entry level work that we've done with, uh, with Landmark. Um, the stu teachers that we have that are getting trainee, trained in Orton Gillingham, um, the our kind of unified, our, our uniform um, writing rubric that we have that's more of a tier one uh, across all uh, of our subjects, uh, lined in with um, IXL, which is kind of supporting the individual learners, um, I think is already yielding some literacy results in this last year uh, in that we are the highest performing SGP uh, middle school um, in the area. Um, so. The, that has yielded some results. I know that there are many of the affluent communities based off the Boston Globe um, article that went out on literacy in highly affluent communities, um, specifically Winchester, uh, but also Lexington and some of those communities as well. As those that, all, while they had high performance um, in, 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 as, a, as a whole, they had huge gaps in SGP uh, in, um, in sub, different subgroups. We are not that, uh, that school, uh, and middle school is not, we are not that, and we're demonstrating um, significant strength and literacy across all subgroups. Um, uh, lastly, with that, um, very excited about our SAP pro program, our student assistance team, um, uh, the academic intervention that we have in place, our culturally responsive education academy partnership with the Department of Ed um, has been strong as well. Uh, talents uh, and resources, um, we Last year, had we final or we completed our um, relationship with any base camp, uh, an outside consultant who did an audit for us, um, which helped us um, with some aspects of our new schedule, um, a leadership reorganization about how uh, efficiencies and communication, where things um, fall, uh, and where different redundancies might happen, and where people can go for information, how th things flow. Um, help with that, which we, um, which has been, you know, very productive um, this year. Mr. Kine. Thanks. Um, I want to start off by, um, you know, beginning of the year, I did not have an admin team. So. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah, in the um, so thanking the teachers and the guidance department and the office staff, everybody that got us through uh, until Brenda Morrow and Emily Laurie came on board. Um, you know, when you look at the work that we have in here, really falls on, you know, Brenda and Emily and our, our curriculum people in the building. We've got Ilsa O'Brien, our literacy and social studies. We've got Ashley Bouchard, uh, who is uh, pre-K through grade five. Um, math, and then Allie Curley, who's my integration specialist. So a lot of the work that you see us getting done uh, is spearheaded by those guys. 
Uh, and then I also have to thank our teachers because they did make that science social studies switch and it is working. You know, uh, we are struggling with the time and we knew we were gonna do that, uh, but they are doing it and, and they are making it work uh, as, as we go through. Um, so I wanted to thank uh, them for that. On this communication practices, the one thing, um, we uh, started a um, building-wide student leadership team. Uh, and that student leadership team, we are training right now to be ambassadors uh, for our new students as they come in. Uh, and so picture eight-year-olds trying to figure out what questions, where in the building you want to show. I know they have this in place at middle school already, uh, but I, this is something that is long overdue uh, when we've got new families that come to our district. Um, so we can jump over to social-emotional. So um, some big things here. We are uh, in our third year of the PBIS Academy, second year of RISE. Uh, we are t tweaking it to make it more kid friendly. Um, in uh, November, we had our first school-wide RISE assembly where we had all uh, the students together uh, and we, we looked at empathy and we asked teachers to you know give us some examples of students so we were calling up students who um, showed us empathy. We are going to have at the end of February our second school-wide assembly. The one thing about having schools as big as we are is those assemblies <laughs> can be a little crazy, but it works. And so we're gonna try our second one, and we're gonna be focusing in on, we asked our teachers to have the students at the beginning of the year make resolutions. And mm -hmm. so um, we're gonna be, celeb we're gonna be celebrating those students who may have accomplished uh, their resolution. Um, a big thing that we are focusing in on this year is attendance. Uh, if in every week we talk about attendance in um, our guidance meetings and focus on who are those students who are missing school. We found in our accountability data that we weren't making the gains that we should be uh, in, in that. Um, more so in some of the subgroups. Um, so right now we are at, um, at a peak, we are at 96.3. And at our lowest, we were at 93.9. But this is far above where we've been uh, in some of the future years. COVID didn't help anybody. You know, when, when somebody's sick, they're home, social, emotional, they're staying home. But every week we're trying to focus on who's not coming in, why aren't they coming in? We're talking to the school nurse, are they sick? We're talking to the guidance counselors, there's something going on. We're talking to the classroom teachers. We are putting this in the staff newsletter every week so the teachers can be on board and so they know who's there. But we are seeing an increase in our attendance. We just sent out our second wave of letters to families whose students may not have met the certain goals that they should be on day 90. Um, but it is a focus because social emotionally, some kids just aren't coming to school and families can't get them yeah. to come to school. Uh, and this is one way uh, that we can uh, focus on that. Uh, next one. Teaching and learning, uh, we've got a lot going on. Um, the landmark, um, I wasn't gonna talk, but it really has been useful. Um, our language-based teachers, we've got one in grade four and five. Uh, they've been going through this training for the last two years. And all of our special education teachers uh, have been trained in Orton-Gillingham. We are seeing the gains. Sometimes it's slow and teachers get frustrated, but we just did a data dive into our mid-year assessments and I had, uh, you know, a special ed teacher at my, my table, and she looked and she's like, they made gains. It may not have been as much as some of the other students, but everybody is making those gains uh, in, in the school. Um, wind block is, um, you know, we've been talking about wind, what I need. And so half an hour in every classroom, we've got two reading tutors that help with some of the two tier two interventions. They see about 60 students. 
Um, they are reassessing students every month. Uh, they are redibbling to see where the kids are. Many times students won't come off of a reading tier two because there's a next level of reading that they need to get to. So for instance, they might master phonics, but then you gotta get into fluency. Mm -hmm. They might master fluency, but then they gotta get into comprehension. So a lot of times you may see kids stay in longer in some of that tier two, but it is helping, and we are looking at where those gains are across the year. In math, we've only got one tutor, so we're only seeing about 35 students, but we just graduated about half of them out of that with this new round of assessments. What we see in this is, a lot of this is skill-based, and then they can go on and they can continue, you know, they can start getting into some of the grade level math. Um, when we did our assessments, we, we found that 85% of the students in our last asse assessments were meeting or above in math. And in, in reading, we were 78% reading and above. And reading is, is much harder, but that data dive showed teachers, what else do I need to do in the classroom to get some of those students to improve. And they had the, we did a Jamboard, and a, a Jamboard is a digital way, like sticky notes on the computer. So they can anonymously put in, what do I wanna look at next? So uh, in either next week or the week after vacation, we're going into the, the, the grade level PLCs and talking about what else can we be doing uh, with our individual students, okay? Besides, um, you know, somebody taking your child outside of the classroom, what can we do with our tier one instruction that might strengthen um, the, 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 what the students are getting in, in the classroom? Another big thing on here is um, we, we're, the elementary schools have picked uh, uh, a math program that we would like to move forward with. Um, we had Envision Math that we've been using for a while. We looked at iReady Math and we looked at Eureka Math Squared. And Eureka Math Squared came out on top in um, what our teachers thought would be the next best thing for our students. Where that comes from is it offers a lot more scaffolding for students. Um, in, in the lesson plans, whereas in some of the others it didn't go into, like it might teach to the, like all students to not get into the nitty gritty or give them um, a pathway to um, understand what those concepts are. Um, like David said about, Dr. Jordan said about uh, IXL, um, we are uh, pretty clear that we would like to go with iReady Diagnostics for that tool as well, and I think um, Dan proposed that when we were doing our, our budget initiatives mm -hmm. a while back to take the place of STAR and take the place of some of our other technology tools. It would do what we needed it to. So we did a pilot with the iReady Diagnostic only uh, in two fifth grade classes because they're fifth grade teams, a fourth grade class and a third grade class. And they started this probably October. So they take the original ass the assessment and they took the STAR assessment. They, they didn't take the iReady assessment. But with that, actually no, they took the, the iReady ready. assessment, sorry. And from there, they were given pathways for each one of their students to reach their goals. Those four classrooms made the biggest gains out of all the classrooms because of the individualized um, pathways that, that it had. So I know it's only four classrooms, but it does give us, you know, kind of what we are looking for uh, in this. And then, um, there's another thing that I wanted to say about that. Uh, highest classrooms and, I don't know, I'll come back to it if I get to it. Just to um, and then I want to put a huge plug in for um, Math Palooza. Math Night is coming back. Who remembers Math Night? <laughs> we are coming back, uh, and so we're calling it <coughs> Math Palooza. It's going to be on Pi Day. Who can tell me what Pi Day is? Dave Kimes' birthday. That's what it is. 314. <laughs> yeah. 314 is Pi Day. Um, and so putting in a big, big plug uh, for that. And then we'll go on to the last one. 
Um, one thing um, Dr. Kuska has been having us do at our monthly admin meetings, we are taking a look at some of our write-ups and, and taking a look at how they coordinate across the, the different buildings. And so we are trying to um, become more consistent across the buildings and how we're giving feedback to the teachers. In December, we did a building walkthrough of um, Adams Middle School. Uh, and then uh, next week, we will be doing a building walkthrough at uh, the Miller School, uh, where we pop into about, um, each group pops into about five different classrooms and we have four different groups that go around the building. So that's what we're doing at Miller. Thank you. I feel like you need a movement break, but okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so I think my colleagues really talked about a lot of our initiatives, so I'm just going to talk to different things that are more unique to Placentino. For communication, I really want to talk about Seesaw, um, Winnie Carey, our digital um, integration specialist. She's a, I think she's a Seesaw ambassador. I think that's her um, big title. And she, I think there's about a quarter of our staff who's chosen as a professional learning goal to be able to really bring Seesaw into their classrooms. And while it's a digital portfolio, while um, it's used for families that they can um, see a glimpse into the classroom, they can comment on their students' work, they can like their students' work so the students can go in and see that their families um, have commented on it. They can build different activities in it. Seesaw has a huge library of activities that are already there for teachers that can enhance the learning um, that's there. But what I've noticed, especially when I was reading through uh, different teachers' formative evidence, we just did that, um, is that they're using it as a tool to monitor learning. So students are creating stories and sharing their writing through it. They're reading their writing or they're reading to their teachers. So it's another opportunity for their teacher to, you know, have an informal snapshot of how their students are doing in a very fun and engaging way. So we're really proud of that. I think I'm going to be talking about communication throughout all the different arches. So I'm going to move on to social emotional well-being. Um, I think Dave and David both talked about Ruler a little bit. At Placentino, we've been really diving in. Our staff has completed the first two-hour course called An Emotional Mindset. Um, we've been using staff meetings to kind of dive a little bit more into it. It's all around being able to recognize and label and understand your own emotions. And we as adults aren't that great at it. Um, we were kind of joking around that, you know, when someone asks you, how are you feeling? pushing yourself beyond the word fine. So we have this rule now at Placentino, you can't say fine. Um, it's really difficult to label your emotions, but if we as adults can't do it and we can't model it for our students, how do we expect our students to be able to label and understand their own emotions? So we're really kind of digging into that as well. Um, as Dave and David also talked about, we are also, um, on year three officially, I guess, of PBIS yeah. Academy. Um, but what I'm really proud about is that we have a team of teachers who are taking our, the leadership role for PBIS and looking at how we can strengthen it across Blasentino. Um, last week, we just had a challenge where um, we had special care cards that they earned. They were purple snowflakes, and each class earned 100. They're now voting on... Um, I hope it's a whole school dance party, but it, I don't know, it might be something else. So we'll see what the students um, do for that. I'm probably gonna spend the bulk of our time talking about teaching and learning. I feel like um, at Placentino, when the new dyslexia law came out, we really, it's what we believe in anyways, so it was an opportunity for us to kind of dive into that next step. Um, Jess, um, Mrs. Beattie and I, along with um, our other leadership at Placentino, have really looked at how we can support our teachers' understanding of reading that may not kind of follow that typical trajectory. Not saying that all students following this trajectory might have a disability, but how do we help struggling readers? How do we identify it? How do we look at it as it's happening, not in a hindsight glance? 
um, at Placentino, we've done um, some pretty in-depth professional development around dyslexia, demystifying it, talking about what it is, helping our teachers understand it. You have to understand when teachers went, even recently, our teaching prep programs have not caught up with best practices, to be honest with you. So um, they're learning with us and doing some unlearning as well. Um, we also had a parent evening um, through CPAC where we, um, at Placentino, along with Mrs. Beattie, we had a, a good crew who came in of parents, and we really talked about what is dyslexia, what um, are the laws, what does that process look like, and we're having another evening in February 28th about what does instruction look like. So we're looking forward to that as well. Um, we have been, we have about three quarters of our teachers who've chose either professional and or student learning goals themselves around this. So really looking at their data, um, moving from just administering a test to having it be really part of their, their, their instruction, having them look at it, having them help them guide. Um, something that is a little different this year is we are actively doing progress monitoring for any student who is not meeting benchmark. Um, a little shift to what has happened in the past is not just students who are getting reading support, students who have been quote unquote and kind of watch. And our teachers are actually the ones who are administering the Dibbles assessment. So that's, um, while it might not seem like a big switch, being receiving data and actually administering the assessment yourself, it becomes, um, I've had teachers say it's eye-opening and they're owning that data a little bit more. We've really been diving into landmark six teaching principles, um, how you know we can look at all of our instruction and saying, does that match it? So is it multi-sensory? Are we micro-uting um, different aspects? Do we have student voice and partnership? How many opportunities? So a typical child needs between zero and 40 to be able to get a concept. A struggling reader or a student with a learning disability needs between 400 and 200 opportunities to be able to get that skill. So when we have um, teachers bring students to our, st our student assistance team, we ask them to reflect, well, how many opportunities do you think they have? And how can you change their day or their instruction so they're getting more? <coughs> because that's what research tells us that we have to do. Tomorrow, we'll all be mailing our um, middle of the year assessments. And at Placentino, because we're unique, because we have French, um, we had to look at it a little differently. Our, our Dibbles assessment, um, because our French students are not instructed in English, it, other than phoneme segmentation, um, we can't give them that assessment because it's not an accurate measure for them because they're not being instructed in it. So we had to look at di something different. So we looked at what the indicators were for dyslexia, and one of it is rapid naming. So what we did with all of our French students um, in the past month is we gave them the rapid um, rapid naming assessment um, so that in what that looks like is it's beyond them needing to know letters, it's colors, it's shapes, it's multiple stimuli together. And what that is an indicator of is what a student's able to do um, with their reading fluency. So um, all that will be shared with families. We're sending that home tomorrow. Um, I want to like that could not happen. Jenny Mann has been absolutely incredible. She's our literacy specialist. Um, I just left Winnie Carey and Cheryl, Car uh, Cheryl um, Cordero and Lisa Robinson stuffing letters in the office right now. They've been absolutely incredible in our partnership with Jess, like looking at how we can bring in more resources to support our teachers. Finally, around um, talent in resources. Um, I think what I really want to um, highlight is around culture and climate. We've been having monthly meetings with a very large membership of our school. Again, this has become teacher-led. I think it's important to think about especially culture and climate. If that's led by me, that says something about the culture and climate of our building, when it's shifted towards being more staff, um, teachers, paraprofessionals, and other members. And we just kind of just did something recently for our paraprofessionals outside of 
of any you know national day um, just a, like a thank you that we put into their mailboxes which was all teacher ideas around how we can just recognize their hard work because they really are um, the backbone of our school and finally I just want to shout out to all of our school counselors it's school counselor week um, we could not do anything without our counselors they are um, the support of our students are the, who have the hardest time walking in the door every day, and um, we just want to thank them. So that's Boston Tina. Thank you for pointing out about the, the shifting that needs to happen for culture and climate, because I really think people always say, what can you do, <laughs> superintendent, and what can you do, principal, to, to change the culture and climate? And we've learned so much that it has to come from within. Mm -hmm. So it's really about what can we do to help foster right. and help our staff feel safe to promote it because it, yeah. the peer-to-peer -peer interactions really make the difference. Absolutely. Thank you. Any questions for anyone? Including our central team that's sitting in the audience. Could be happy to come up here if needed. <laughs> They'd be like, excited yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, we <have> <laughs> Thank you. I have a comment, two comments, um, really quick. The, um, I just wanted to thank all of the coffees were, were there. I know there was a district one with principals, and then I've been to a bunch at the high school with Mr. List. Um, it's great to have an opportunity. And actually, the PTO meetings um, at the middle school Sorry, I don't have elementary kids anymore, so I don't get there. We're great. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, you are. Like any of the opportunities where parents can drop in and have a more informal conversation, especially if they there is a specific concern, I think it's really valuable, and I appreciate the time to to do that. So, I wanted to thank you all for making those things happen. And then the other thing, when you talked about a vision of a graduate. Um, and I know it's been more of a high school thing. I would love it to, I need to be re-educated as a parent about what that's all about and I would love um, if it does kind of get transmitted down to the lower grades um, to help families understand that part of the education so that in addition to the math and the science and all, um, some of those real, real life skills that Allison is preparing the kids for I think are really great for families to understand um, just the whole picture. So anyway, I think it's a lot Last of good stuff. we did a, a, a original, or er, we did one at each one of the buildings, um, but we do need to do more. But we did bring it to the staff and and talked about it uh, on one of the PD days. Yeah, and I think if there's a way to somehow embed that in the communications about what we're doing that relates to that vision of a graduate, right. connect those dots. Could you well. shift for, yeah. at least yeah. for, for it's different from when I was at school, and so I don't always recognize all of that part of, you know, sometimes when I see my kids are doing a presentation and they have to look, practice it, like, I'm like, oh, that's great, you're gonna need to know how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just really valuable for families to understand that you're, you're doing all of that too, <laughs> in addition to. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you for the coffee hours, because um, we weren't sure how that first pre camp was something new I wanted to try with us this year. And we weren't sure if people would come, and we actually had a pretty good yeah. turnout. And um, I was talking with a parent the other day about they were very pleased with that too. So we are going to schedule a follow-up one, and then if we feel like we might, we also talked about I think trying to maybe do a nighttime by Zoom because we know that people can't get there. So we're going to try to plan <laughs> one where we can be available as a panel at night too. They didn't know that. No, I'm kidding. They <laughs> we talked about. We didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but feel free to stay. <laughs> uh, moving on with uh, Dr. Bernard, uh, unfortunately unable to join us. Uh, we will uh, postpone her presentation and move on to the uh, AI Steering Committee. Mr. McLeod, I know, is very excited to talk yeah. about this topic. And I keep sending him articles that I'm receiving. and. Um, you know, we're hearing so much more about this on a daily basis, so. Can I join the Zoom? Oh, yes. So I yes. can share? Sure can. Thank you. And then I will make you a co-host in a second. Perfect. I find this entire right. topic. You should be all set. 
I've already said that I'm going to try to. Yeah. Dan's <laughs> helping us. Down. Cool, but and I'm like, I'll just say Dan's been helping us as administrators <laughs> to try to get more comfortable. So we are all testing the waters in little bits. Yeah. And I think if you just take things in little chunks and apply it in one small area, I, you, then you kind of find out it's not as bad as you think. It's actually there's, the it's pros are all. Bad. It's just scary, right? It's that uncharted territory, and we don't know how far it's going to go. And, and I know teachers are nervous because how do you ensure that students are not plagiarizing and things like right. that? I will say I read an article, I'll see if I can find it for you, that came out the other day that the research is showing, I, don't, I didn't read the whole details, but the research is showing that they're not seeing AI in plagiarism situations um, happening as they thought they would. So I don't know how they've assessed that, but I, I thought that was an interesting article that I read the other day. Hopefully one day they can replace school from the university. <laughs> well, good evening, good evening everyone. Um, so happy to share where we are with AI in uh, Holliston. So I wanted to take you on a sort of a, a trek of where we started. Uh, chat GPT was the big one that came out in November 2022. We kind of like, you know, waiting to see what went on with that. And then we, we started to pick it up last spring. The tech integration folks and, and me, we started to, to attend conferences, workshops, trying to get a feel for what people were doing. That evolved into summer curriculum opportunities. So thanks, thank you to Dr. Kuska. We had a teacher here at the high school, Bob Tivnan. He's the math department chair. He's uh, really supercharged with AI and, and the topic. So he took it on and created this awesome spreadsheet um, I'll just give you a glimpse of it. It has a ton of AI links and resources. And what's really cool with AI now is you can actually put a link and it'll summarize like three or four bullets what the article is about. So he used a little bit of that to help summarize. Um, it, yes, go figure. Um, so meta. <laughs> uh, then we formed the steering committee. I think it was uh, the, the first newsletter, Dr. Kuska, we sent out. I, I put a Google form for people to join. Um, and that formed in the fall, late fall, November, December. We had 21 participants, and I'll talk about them in a few minutes. The steering committee, committee met four times over four Tuesdays for an hour and a half. We co probably could have met four more, but um, yeah, I figured I had to cut it off at some point. <laughs> Uh, but this is what they came up with, and this is published on our website. It's not, it's not um, finalized. It's simply a recommendations from this committee. A lot of it has to come through school committee, the policy subcommittee, senior leadership. But we wanted to share what they had developed. So we have a vision, a executive summary, and those align with the vision of a graduate. And then I'm not going to read all these, but I just want to highlight some of the recommendations which primarily are professional development. No surprise there, the committee feels strongly that uh, professional development of teachers and actually administrators too is super important in implementing AI. And then innovation pathway at the high schools mentioned, and, we, and you heard Mr. List talk about that earlier. So we think maybe somewhere in that pathway, there's gonna be some form of AI embedded, hopefully. Don't know what that looks like, but that's what the hope is. And the committee shares that same hope. And was there any discussion about any um, courses being developed on AI and making that part of the computer science investment? Great question. We actually are hearing uh, rumblings that there's going to be a computer science requirement. So um, don't have an answer for that. Okay. But um, we feel like, again, it's all coming pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So. And then uh, 24, 25, they, they wanted recommendations on the agenda for folks to review, and those include a keynote speaker, for example. That's where I got super excited. Um, but we'll see how that plays out. Uh, AI scholars, this is interesting. They want, the committee thought, um, let's build like a, a cadre of students who are really interested in AI and enhance them and make them AI scholars and perhaps they could assist teachers. They could be like frontline in the classroom assisting teachers with AI implementation. So that was one of the recommendations that came. And then again, staff development is a huge theme throughout all of this. And we actually uh, implemented, which I'll share shortly, 
some staff development already in a variety of forms. And then finally, this is a committee that I was part of, um, the acceptable use policy, and then plagiarism and cheating is a hot topic with AI. And so this committee wrestled with all of that. Um, and actually the students were, no surprise here, right? The students gave the most enlightening comments, like they're actually concerned about other students cheating with AI. Um, and it's, it's probably, you know, there, there's certainly students that use chat, we believe, but there's also students that care a lot about doing it the right way. So these students, there was four students on the committee, but it was great to hear their perspectives throughout. So anyway, um, Cynthia uh, and the policy subcommittee have looked at our revisions and we're gonna take them to other stakeholders for further review. And then eventually I'm sure it'll come before the entire committee. Yes. And then, uh, so that's, those are the recommendations, sorry. The 21 people, who are they? So down in the bottom left corner, again, this is on our website, you'll see the four students and the committees they're part of. We had six staff members, which was awesome. They gave up their time Tuesday nights to come and volunteer. And then uh, 10 really passionate parents. A lot of these folks uh, use AI in their jobs and they're high level either tech directors or whatever like me using AI, but they, it was interesting, they were all wrestling in their organizations with AI as well. Uh, no one had answers when we met, really. So we were all like learning from each other. <clears throat> so that's the committee and the recommendations. Uh, we did have staff training <coughs> and admin training winter, like just in the past couple weeks, we had admin council training and then January 31st, we trained our staff. And I wanted to do a quick demo of that. Um, cool. And actually, I'm not going to show the entire thing, but here's what we showed our staff. It's a product called Diffit. So the way it would work is the teachers could go and pick a standard from DESI. Um, this is a fifth grade math standard, for example. And they plug it into this AI program called Diffit for teachers. Hopefully it's still here. And it generates basically an entire lesson an adaptive reading passage, a summary, key vocabulary words, questions with answers. And then one of the student activities, which is really powerful, is they can export this right to Google Forms, this quiz, and this matches closely with what Chromebooks and Google Classroom and everything we do. And so literally, this was three clicks, and as a teacher, I've got this assessment dialed up and ready. And I did this in about 30 seconds. So I went from a standard to a passage, lesson with answers, and then a Google form. Things that would have taken, you know, oh, yeah. possibly hours. Right. Done in, I would maybe not seconds, but you know, a minute or two. As long as we, as long as you put in the prompts properly, this is what you end up with. So, so what were the prompts? Well, the prompt was actually this. I just picked a standard. Okay. This is a read closely standard from Destiny. Just that one right there, okay. And that was, I think, a fifth grade standard, I believe. Yeah, fifth grade language arts. And then what did you do? I took that, I copied and pasted that, I put it into Diffit. And I, I would show the process, but it takes about 30 seconds to generate it, okay. so I didn't want to waste time. Okay. But this is what it generated. And then I can take this lesson, so to speak, and I can turn it into a Google form or I could just print it out. There's also some powerful translation features, oh, so cool. I can translate this to any language wow. of students in my classroom. So again, and AI is really super powerful with translations, so awesome. there's a lot of promise with the whole uh, AI. Is that right? Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, I um, think it's not meant to replace, I think this is where we're not expecting a teacher to just take this at face value, then to, to analyze it and see other things that I want to add to it, take from it, and all parts of it. You know, my, my daughter's a teacher at a high school, 
and she had AI training in the fall, and I remember her coming home excited because she said, Mom, I had done my lesson, but then differentiating that lesson for multiple you know, levels in the classroom, she was able to plug in and get different levels for her vocabulary lesson and, and modifying and things like that. So even just for that piece, being able to take it and modify a lesson down, you're doing the initial work, and then you know, the good teaching analyzes what's um, relevant and not relevant as well. Yeah, great point. All of this is editable, so if I didn't like one of these questions, I could easily edit it. And it, it is, a, like a lot of people call it an 80-20 tool. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll do 80% of yeah, your you know, legwork, and then you have to spend the last 20 with your own creativity. That's cool. But this is what we showed teachers on January 31st. Uh, we're going to continue to try to infuse AI into all of our professional development, and that's one of the huge recommendations from the committee. I'll give an example of something I saw teachers using just the day, uh, the same day that um, in the afternoon after this training took place. We had some high school teachers that I visited in the room, and they were actually taking and going using AI to help them come up with sample rubrics, and then they had multiple versions that they were getting from all these different places, and then being able to say, which pieces of this one do I want? But just, they were so excited about, again, minimizing the amount of time, but they're still making it authentic to what they need for their classes. It's not just they're spitting it out and taking it the way it is, you know? Right. Because they're taking the idea and getting that's how I see, I think, a lot of um, our, our teachers that really are ready to kind of take on the challenges that they would be getting multiple ideas and then taking yeah, those and bringing it into one classes, thing, yeah. one lesson or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Just a couple tidbits, uh, if you're curious. The Massachusetts guidance has been uh, a little bit slow coming out. There's one council here linked up. I'm not going to spend some time on there, but it's, it's a council of 15 people that are just discussing AI at the state level. And then the national guidance, there's, there's a lot of national guidance out there. And, and some states have actually, like K-12 systems, they've given guidance to the K-12 districts in that state, like California, Oregon, a couple others come to mind. Massachusetts has not yet done that. So that's why a lot of school districts like us are starting to just take it. Uh, we know it's here and try to create policy and um, guidance for it. Questions, thoughts? Oh, you're thinking, I did want to add, because uh, Dan doesn't know this yet, but um, I know that um, Barbara Ryan wanted to meet with us to talk a little bit more about some of the, and I was going to bring this up when we were talking uh, earlier with the principals, um, working with HDAC and substance abuse and bringing in some training for students. So Mindshare is going to be doing some work with the middle school and high school. And then I asked if maybe Mindshare could help partner with us to see if they can help us provide an AI-type keynote speaker for the fall. So um, because, again, we don't, we're don't we trying to keep our budget down, but if we can partner with some of the community groups. And I think there's some willingness there, so we should be able to do something like that this fall. But I also talked about whether if we do something for staff, can we do a family engagement piece after, in, you know, after the <coughs> as well? Can we get that next piece in showing parents in the work that we're doing in that respect? Yeah, okay, great. These, these are just ideas the committee came up with. Um, you know, the, it, it could be just as valuable to have you know teachers collaborating for 90 minutes on AI um, and all the tools. So, again, we were just sharing the ideas, and I want to publicly thank those 21 individuals for. Uh, spending their Tuesday nights with me <laughs> right before Christmas. Um, it was really valuable and actually a lot of fun, and some people commented they enjoyed coming to those events uh, just to collaborate. So, And we're going to meet again. They, they know this. We're going to keep meeting because this is all just, you know, happening a million miles an hour. So. Dan, is that um, resource spreadsheet that Bob Tenney put together, is that on the website somewhere? Um, great question. I don't think it is, so I'll make sure it's up there. Yeah, so, just so people know how to access yeah. that. It's probably embedded in one of the agendas, but mm -hmm. it's, not, mm -hmm. it's not easy to find, so I'll put it up there. Thank you. And Bob and the tech integrationists are really like the leaders, uh, and Jesse Conan, I should comment on him. He's taken the lead with the uh, responsible use policy for students. We're trying to take the massive acceptable use and try to make it student friendly if we can. Thank you, Dan. One quick thing, Dan, we'll have you. Um, could we maybe open back up to the uh, community email distribution? I think we talked about January. Yes. But yeah. uh, just, the you know. Yes. yes, definitely. We'll do it. Communicate that out. Any other questions for Dan? Or? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> we 
uh, do you have a policy? I do. It's um, second reading, but there's no um, changes from that I got received from the committee from the first reading, so I can read the whole thing all over again, or we can waive the second reading. I, I think we should waive the second reading. And, okay. Motion by Dawn. Okay. Second, second. Wait, everyone, is this a motion to waive it or a motion we're, to just adopt it? Uh, we're going to adopt it. Right, I didn't know if we had to waive it first. We have to vote to waive okay. the second I'll reading. I'll be waiving the second Waiving reading. the second reading for IMGA. All right, say Thank I, you, and then also, five nothing. Okay, and then <laughs> to adopt IMGA service animals in schools as have, have presented. Motion by Dawn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. That carries by nothing. Um, but just before I head off that, so Dan did a lot of work on the acceptable use policy. This is something that has been like a bear that we've been sitting on. I don't know, I don't even think AI was even a thing when we first kind of punted it over to you guys to start talking about. And so at this point, you know, it's very comprehensive. But uh, after some discussion with our the subcommittee, we were like, well, let's send it back to the, the principal's teachers for that, their feedback to make sure that it's something that, you know, everyone's good with. And then after that, I still think it needs to go to the hurdle of <coughs> Andy Waugh, likely, um, and then come back. And it's something that we would then implement for the fall because it has to go into the handbooks. Mm -hmm. So that's why the timing is such that it is. So my my hope is that we'll be presenting it back in no later than June for us to actually um, approve that that revision and then it would be put into the handbooks for the, over the summer. Does that make sense? Yeah, any guidance from MASC? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Not a lot. <clears throat> um, I shouldn't have laughed like that, but I, I will. Um, and then what was the other thing? Oh, and then the other thing I just wanted to update for, you know, uh, David List isn't here anymore, but um, we had talked about the early graduation part policy, and there's a number of other policies that we need to rescind. Uh, unfortunately, Jess and some others were not able to make our last meeting, so we couldn't really go through that list of policies that are kind of defunct at this point. Um, one of them that we have is on early graduation. There is no MASC policy around this. Um, it is typically a process that is done at the high school with the administration with some parameters around like you can appeal to but there's not a process where they would come to us for it so I will be coming forward with a recommendation for us to rescind our policy but I wanted to make sure that there was a process that David List already had in place to present to us for us to see um, before we did that. So I hope whole, that I'll have that. The whole thing or just put in place like David List or the principal has this and then the appeal to the school committee. Yeah, but it won't be a pol it won't be a school committee policy because there isn't a school committee policy around this through MSC. It's a, it's like they don't have one. Yeah, it's a procedure. It's, it's, it's not in the policy. But I just website. it'll be on the it'll be in the handbook, but it's not like one of our policies because it's not a school committee policy, because it's not an MASC policy. Our policy Most system. schools don't have this. It's something that is handled at the No, no, I don't disagree level. with it. I just want to make sure that we have a yeah. process. That's why I'm saying, like, I didn't want to rescind this mm -hmm. until there was a process that David List had in place for us to, you know, approve, essentially. Is there that would any, go in the handbook. Is there any other um, item that can be appealed to us, but we don't have a policy on it? Because I feel like when we've had students come regarding, um, like, uh, curriculum or, or waiving a class or trying to, like, I thought there was still a policy, even though it was. Uh, we, the procedure, when we had the student in trying to do the college credits, I believe right. that was under a procedure. Yeah, under a procedure. yeah, but it's still in a policy, though. Mm -hmm. There's a policy attached to the procedure. Oh, so that's okay. why we're just, we're not going to have it, because it doesn't even exist anymore. But the whole it, thing about oh. dual enrollment, like, it's the, MASC has rescinded any of those policies a long, you know, a while ago. We've for some reason, we still have that policy for whatever reason. So, um, so and I anyway. think you would vote on so when it's entered into this handbook as yeah, a procedural correct. change. You would vote on the handbook mm -hmm. and yes. how that is implemented. So I just want, and that would be in place. You know, whenever we decide, there would be a place. It would be now, but you know, it could be in the next, you know, this next meeting. But it won't go in the handbook until mm -hmm. um, you know officially. Does that make sense? I just yeah. didn't want. I didn't want anything to be coming forward right now in the in the sense that we would be rescinding this policy. Before but I wanted you to have a process to see that there is a process that happens before we just rescinded it. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Is everybody following me? Okay. I think so. Okay. Um, <laughs> Dan is not, but John is, so we're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. One of us, yeah. one of us has um, got it, so that's yeah. good. Okay. So we'll... Uh, <laughs> I hope to have that. He sent it to me, like, tonight, but I, I wasn't in time for me to put it sure. on the agenda, obviously, so it'll be on the next agenda. Okay. Okay. Is that what you got? Yep, that's what I got. Okay. So we'll move on to central office and <coughs> updates, and I, I, I'd invite Mr. Bidet back to the to the. Yes, uh, I think Mr. Bidet should join. To the, to the table. <laughs> uh, now the boss has said it, so it's got to be. <laughs> I think he was way too comfortable back there. He was. <laughs> <laughs> I told him to come sit next but to me. To do it. Dr. So, I tend to try to be mindful of your time, and that's mm. why I rush through things a lot. But I also don't think I always take the time to highlight some of the things that I do get to see and involve in and enjoy as my role because I'm trying to get through the nitty gritty and also leave time for others to talk. But I did take a couple minutes tonight to pop up a couple of pictures because I think pictures paint a thousand words. So I wanted to just share a couple of slides with you that I put together today um, just because I think you can see um, the fun parts of my job that I don't always get to um, share. Oh, so let me just pop this up. So I put together a few slides as part of my update for some things that I was have been able to enjoy when I've been visiting the buildings. And I know that Ms. Uh, Dr. Jordan talked about the Celtics playbook um, work. If you recall, last year I applied for that for the district, and I engaged Sarah Kuhn and um, Kalagam and Danielle. I'm, I'm blanking on Danielle's last name. Last year were our first um, high school students to take on this work as juniors, and they created. They, they did an immense amount of training last year at the um, what's the um, the Auerbach, the Red Auerbach Center, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. And the Celtics fund all of this work, but these students get trained at the state level, and. The, the amount of growth I've seen, because this is now Kala's second year. Danielle was not able to do it this year, but Jay Patel has joined Kala in these lessons, so she's our expert. But they've expanded, as Dr. Jordan said, and I think he said 30 students, and I happened to go visit to see them doing their first lesson this year. The kids were so engaged, and the speaking skills that I see the, this, the high school students develop, but this is where I think our biggest bang for our buck is going to happen with moving the needle around bias and hate and student voice related to speaking up and not being a bystander. So I'm really excited that this work is continuing. And we'll con these students, because now we're having sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, so they're going to continue through our system and hopefully have more kids understanding how to speak up when they see wrongs and want to write it in the schools. And then another thing that I was, I just happened to be um, on this past Tuesday. I, one of the things I started this year, two things that I started differently around communication. One is that um, bi-weekly I'm meeting with the four principals and myself. We've always had various meetings with central office and principals and the full admin team, but this is the first year that I've had the, the four principals and myself bi-weekly meet and we rotate to different buildings. So I happened to be meeting with them at Placentino this Tuesday when the little ones were coming in. And it was a hundredth day. Um, if you all know what that's like for the young ones, get so excited. They were all dressed up in their older <laughs> gear. Um, but what was funny is I was sitting waiting for the meeting to start because it was at arrival. Um, I heard singing out in the office, and I walked out to see what was going on. And it was four of our wonderful educators at Placentino who were practicing and playing the ukulele. And they were getting ready to do a song about the 100th day for all students over the intercom and asked if I wanted to join them. And I said, you don't want me to sing with you, but of course, <laughs> I did video them. If you, if, you, if you look at our website on the main page, I hope people will see my tweets more because I do tweet all of these things, so look for those. But you'll see the video there that they actually um, sang. And then we had a nice picture together, but it was my little highlight for the morning. And then also, um, this week, I actually attended three staff meetings. I was at the high school staff meeting on Monday and sit, sat in on part of Miller and Rams, both, both on Tuesday, so I did about half of each of those. But this was at the Rams staff meeting. Um, if you see at the front there, um, Carla Brady, our speech pathologist at the high school, and James Reed, a science teacher at the high school, happened to do this presentation last year that I caught at the high school 
but Dr. Jordan had asked them to come present at the middle school, so they took their time after school to talk about neurodiversity and autism spectrum and a lot of um, misconceptions that we all have, even as educators, some of the bias around that. So I was really appreciative and, and reached out to thank Carla and James for doing that presentation, and I think it's something that we probably will do at the other buildings as well. But just um, these are the things that I really enjoy and don't get to do enough, but I want to highlight some of that. Um, another couple of things I wanted to mention, I, I shared out with you that I was in um, Atlanta recently for Leading Now training with a number of other s superintendents. I think there were nine of us from Massachusetts, but some were from California, Oklahoma, North Carolina, all over the place. And a lot of the political things that we're dealing with as superintendents and, and leaders in school communities are consistent throughout the country, so it's nice to hear that we're not alone in this work. It was also, it's a nonprofit, so it didn't cost the district anything. My meals, uh, most of my meals and um, the training, hotel and everything was provided for, which is one of the reasons I wanted to avail myself of this opportunity. Um, I also want to share, Dan, I mentioned to you that the on March 28th is going to be a legislative breakfast that I'm hosting through my role as the co-president of Tri-County Roundtable and tech, um, the tech executive director is going to um, work with me on that as well, so I will get the invitation out because I really think if we can have school committee members there, I'm going to reach out directly to Senator Spilka because I would like to see if she might come speak at that event, but stay tuned for that. And let's see what else. Round tables. Uh, I've continued my round tables this year, and I was actually at a, a round table discussion today at the middle school, and I they were very excited asking me for an update of Flag Field, so I was able to give them a brief update on that, so they're waiting to hear more about that. I also, the value of these roundtables is really, well, it means a lot to me, but I think even for some of the kids that I've had repeatedly, there's some students that I've had two or three years in a row now, and a particular student in the district was looking for a recommendation to an outside setting that the family feels will better meet their needs moving forward. And because of my relationship at the roundtable, the student actually sent um, for me to write a recommendation for them. And at first I was surprised because I'm not at the building level, but it just showed me that you know, this work is meaningful and this student, um, when they saw me in the building afterwards, thanked me for doing that. But um, again, I think those connections happen. As Dr. Jordan said, sometimes it's you don't know who's going to be the adult that connects with the student, so we all uh, bear a responsibility there. I mentioned the coffee hours. The only other thing I wanted to mention, actually was the, um, actually two things, sorry. I, another group that I've been working with this year differently, just trying to think of other ways I can connect and support our leaders. So I started a monthly meeting earlier this year that I'm meeting with the SSAs and assistant principals because they're always confined to the building. So I pull out the principals in central office, we meet weekly, and I meet monthly as the full admin team. But this has been something new I tried this year, especially with a lot of new um, assistant principals and SSAs. So today we had um, a meeting and we were reflecting on what would, what would you do differently had you known this at the beginning of the year when you're either coming into Holliston or, or even just if you're, you've been in the district, things that changed this year. So we did a lot of reflecting and that was great. But I've also invited each month a different theme. So one month, Keith came and talked about the budget process in Holliston. So I think that's where we get in our silos and, and getting that communication consistently. Um, Jess Beattie's going to come next month and help support them on the investigatory process. Jerry L came and we did a presentation on the social emotional learning pre-K to 12. So it's something new I'm trying and it's hard to get them out of the building but once I get them together for that hour a month I think it's been really useful and meaningful and I'm going to continue that practice. And then lastly because Joni's not here, I'll do her quick PD, PD update that she would have done for you and I'll be very brief. I stuck it in the um, packet with you if you want to look in there for all the details. There's a lot that happened on January 31st, but I'll highlight just a couple of things. There was a special um, training for all of our K-12 world language teachers because they're a smaller group. Sometimes they don't get the intense training that we can get with other departments. So Joni scheduled a work with me linguistic um, training day on uh, the 31st. And then in the morning, all teachers and all paraprofessionals got a presentation with Landon Callahan, who's come in um, through DESE before last year. So he did a presentation on promoting resilience and healthy outcomes for LGBTQ students. And then, um, so the, actually, our paraprofessionals were able to attend that one as well. And then Jess presented or had a training for paraprofessionals because they stayed with us through noon that day. And they did a workshop 
to um, learn how to be proactive within emeritive settings, working with diverse learners and setting up a system of clear communication and so on and so on. But she brought in a trainer from Merton's Educational Consulting to work with them, and I think they were really appreciative of that. As you know, um, from some of the conversations we've had, I've really been trying to make sure that we're streamlining and having the best PD we can have, and it's always a moving target to try to improve that. And then the only other one that I did want to, because there's a lot, you can see in the packet if you want to look in more detail. In the morning, our teachers also all had a presentation, um, and this is where the t our team is so amazing. We had a cancellation last minute of a training that we were bringing into the district. So Dan um, McLeod, Jess Beattie, Jerry L. Um, Verde, and some of our tech integration team worked together, and they presented tech inclusivity, navigating the future of learning with tools for diverse minds. And I know that Dan talked a little bit about that, but it was well received. Um, and then we were able to, in the afternoon, give all of our, almost all of our staff were either doing curriculum reviews or or they were doing um, curriculum work on stage one, two, or three, depending on where they are. So those are the highlights, and I thought it was a really positive day overall, and we look at the feedback to plan for next time. Great. Keith? And Mr. Bidet. Waiting to be called upon. Um, it's, and I do want to just, just jump in on Susan's thing for a second there. The, the, it was fun to actually, not that I don't see them all the time, but in meeting with them in a different venue, the assistant principals and the SSAs and, and, and doing my short version of, of municipal finance and how, you know, chapter 70 formula works and how the levy works. It just, it, you know, while I had to do the real abbreviated version, it's still, it, we, there was some conversation there, some good questions. It, 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 it is a, I think it's been a great idea of hers to do this. And, um, I think it gives them an opportunity to see how the other half lives sometimes, so I do think it's good. Um, uh, just a couple short things. One thing is um, uh, yesterday, myself, Susan, and Joni, not yesterday, day before yesterday, or was it yesterday? They're all blending together. Um, we, we, we met with, the, uh, with, with leaders, not the leaders, with leaders of the uh, three large um, parent groups, the PTO, um, uh, HEF, and uh, uh, CPAC. Um, to talk about uh, about donations, things have been running a little um, unfettered, um, and so we're we're going to be working on uh, putting together a mechanism for them to get us information more regularly, so that we can present it to you more regularly and go from there. They're, basically, what they're going to do is present what they want to award um, to Susan or I, and then we can bring that forward to turn it around quickly for them. So it's not to put a a, a roadblock in the way. It's more of just to make sure that we're meeting the, the, the requirements of both yeah, um, your policy, which actually follows law now. So yeah, Unfortunately, um, we did have to rewrite the policy last, uh, I think it was January, mm -hmm. but we have not necessarily gotten that communication out as effectively as we could, so we want to make that process more meaningful and easier. And it really does come down more of a formality of you accepting those. I don't foresee you not accepting, but it is under your purview because it relates to the budget, so we want to do a better job of getting that to you. What kind of requests or grants were they considering? The so it really grant? would be almost anything. It, it's, it's everything from, like, this box of pencils to, you know, culture connection. You know what I mean? It, it's got... Well, we're not going to have... The, if a parent sends in Kleenex, we're not going to have you approving Kleenex, but if well, it's no, a but that's, large... Well, no, that's different. That's... Um, yeah. That's not necessarily a gift. That's it, as opposed to that's yeah. like I found Plus something supply, which exactly, which we're not counting on that. Yeah. But no, when they make a when they when there's a request from a from a teacher or a principal or someone in the schools, um, in their part of their grant period, if they were making an award as small as it is or as large as it is, um, as large as it could be, um, we just need to report that to you, um, get your get your approval for it. Um, it's going to be literally like three lines, right. um, possibly. You know, we can embed it in in. We consent agenda. Exactly. Exactly. So it's that's really it. something we'll add to the agenda for the February 29th meeting, and then there. If, if we have if something, we have some, yeah. <laughs> do do we have anything at this point? Not since we met with them this week. No. We're creating a form. We're going to try to streamline it for them so that they can submit it through Google. And part of what we were finding is there was some miscommunications around what types of things PTO or. Um, HEF or CPAC should be providing, right? Because we are, we should be providing curricular things. They, they're providing more enrichment opportunities or unique situations, but we also want to make sure that equity is happening. So making sure that we're not just kind of throwing something out there that then creates an inequity for other classes. So having some discussions about that. And I think that they're still going to be doing <coughs> most of what right. they're doing. It's just, it's just it, was a, it was a real, it was actually a good discussion yeah. um, in the afternoon. It was Tuesday afternoon. It was Tuesday. Um, on, 
you know, in general about all the fundraising needs that are out there right now and the amount of pull that's happening to parents on it. So again, we just want to be able to partner with them on this. They're, they're very, you know, very valuable organizations for us, providing resources and, and truthfully, you know, having their ear to the ground on a lot of issues that we don't. And I think um, what, what they were hearing too, that they're feeling bad because they have to say no because they're getting so many requests. And then we were able to help them say, well, that probably shouldn't be coming to you anyhow, so that can let it off their plate and focus on the things that they can do because they're getting tapped quite a bit, mm -hmm. and then they're feeling bad if they can't be all of those yeah, Why were they getting curriculum requests? I think there was some miscommunication, and um, recently, remember, there was a misunderstanding that we were putting a freeze on materials, mm -hmm. so somehow that got translated up and people were asking for things that should be curriculum-wise um, purchased at the building level. We didn't have a freeze, but there was a misunderstanding. We were talking about not having any purchases that can wait till we're further along in the budget process, but not the things that we need right now, we are not putting any kind of stuff so on. Is it an opportunity to communicate again about the fact that they're, about what you can ask for and that there isn't an, an across the board freeze? That's gone out. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. the day sent that out to principals, and then principals yeah. sent something out yeah. to the staff as well. Okay. So I don't think, we haven't heard anything right. since that one um, time, and then that's when PT. And I think CPAC reached out directly, and then we were able to just support them with that. Okay. So I don't think this, I think it's all straightened out. I haven't heard anything more. But the request the PTO came with was this week, though, right? No, no we, they we, haven't we, given us any new, new requests. Right, we, we know nothing. They wanted We wanted to have a talk with them so that they they could move forward and not have this pressure on them and how we can support each other. So that, that's what we came to a good meeting of the minds with that and make it a little more efficient to get that information up to you. But they can give under $50 a year to each that's teacher, right? Or is a, a gift, yes. That's a gift to the teacher, not to the schools. Correct. If they give a gift to the school, not a gift. Well, they give a gift to the schools regardless of what it is. Um, it has to go through the school committee with the understanding also that the gift they're giving is to the schools, not to the teacher. Correct. You know, we've had that issue over time way back when with, you know, things like computers or, or um, you know, uh, video cameras. We've had issues with literally teachers thinking when they left here they got to walk out with them. So. And the other piece, too, I mean, we talked about technology because that's been, and this is not just Hollis and this happened everywhere I've gone when people were trying to get creative and getting more technology into students' hands. Sometimes people will reach out to a group like a PTO, can I get this in my classroom? And it's not that we're unwilling to accept that, it's more about then it falls on the responsibility of the tech department to manage that. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure it's compatible, that it meets all our you know, compliance things. So it doesn't always help us to get those. It has to kind of go through the tech department and, and be streamlined that way so that we're not adding devices and gadgets that don't fit um, our needs, and then who's going to fix them when they break because they're not our property anymore. They, 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 they become our property, but we didn't uh, buy them, so it gets tricky. And just to, you had said you're concerned because maybe one or two teachers may ask for something for equity purposes and not it's not available to everyone. Is this, though, an opportunity with that type of funding to run things on a trial basis, right? If one or two teachers yeah. has a great idea and asks for something, let them pilot it, especially if it's through a PTO grant, and then they can always come back and we can we can uh, Yeah, and actually they gave us a good funding. example of something that they've been asked for is to purchase the clickers for behavior, like, you know, that when you walk by a student, there's a clicking device that they can make a click and it just kind of snaps the child to attention. It's nothing invasive, but it's a, a little system that helps with behavior management in classes to keep kids on task. Apparently they received a lot of requests for that. If that's something that is a, if that's something that's it's, becoming yeah. a true need, I, I know. Um, well, they use that for other, other what's training too. What's this to do on the student side? I'm not, I don't understand. So, this. <laughs> some of the, when I when I was a classroom teacher, we, we had token systems like this. Students might have a few tokens on their desk, and if it was a student that had impulsivity, let's say, and would speak out of turn, they might get three tokens, and then they had to learn that they had to budget those tokens. So it was just a system to help them be mindful of. Um, that they, they had to really think about the decisions they were making. This is a similar thing if a child is distracted or something, they might just, it's a little, I, I don't have one. This is what PTO was telling us, and I've heard of them before. And it just makes a slight clicking noise so that the student kind of um, might focus back in. It's a very quiet, non-invasive tool. But point being, a number of teachers were asking for that. So if that is a tool that is useful that many teachers want, then maybe we should be knowing that so that we could then Figure out right. if it's well, something that the special the ed other, department should be buying or somebody yeah. else. The other thing was that I think they were just reinforcing that they have to go through their building principal. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to do that in order to go to the process for the PTO. Like they can't just usurp that. Mm -hmm. So that was just kind of re 
educating around that. Right, so just to, to be clear, though, on the, on the spending, we don't have a spending freeze, but we are sort of tightening things up a little bit, so we're not just spending on everything, right? Oh, what mindful? does that mean, though, yep. for, just for people to understand what that means? I mean, I mean what, what it truthfully means is that if, if it's not something that you don't need now, whether that be curricular or a box of paper, um, we want you just to pause, just to, for us to be able to, again, kind of gather our acorns. Because again, at some point, we, we know the budget next budget year is going to be challenging. We know that up front. And we want to make sure that we're making smart purchases as we go out for the you know, last four or five months of this school year before we get to the next one. That's all. And we're having issues this year. We're snug this year. Snug, yeah. So, I mean, we're, but, but just to be clear, if a, if a science teacher, let's say, has a lab plan as part yeah. of their but curriculum, their stuff. that Correct. should go through and they right. should be able to purchase right. those, those right. supplies. We do, not, we do not want teachers purchasing that out of their own pockets. We know that happens already. Right. Too right. Much. That's so the, and which isn't the purpose of it. I mean, we. It, I mean, I, I don't want to make it sound like we just purchase things willy nilly, but we're taking an extra level of scrutiny now, is what's happening. Okay. And, it, and, and you're confident now that, that the, the, the correct message and, and the correct things are getting approved? And if, so if a teacher takes it up through the chain in, in the building and they think it's yep. an incorrect decision? I'm getting, I'm getting, more, I'm getting more explanations as, as purchasers come through. So they're, okay, and, but they're also can appeal to, to your central office if they think that. I was just wondering if, if they think it, it's been incorrectly sort of interpreted. If the if the principal doesn't support a procurement, it ends there. But if Principal's the principal the had budget. a question, they'll they'll bring the question right. up before they would say right. no. Like, Correct. are you okay with us purchasing? That's what I'm saying. I, I I I'm getting more questions and more explanations. Okay. You know, a, more rationale behind each procurement now, okay. which makes sense. Okay, good. And then also, that, that was supposed to be the short one, by the way, but apparently that didn't happen. Um, oh. We've had a number of, I don't know if anybody's driven by, but we've had a number of vehicles here um, doing work. Um, we lost our, um, we lost our walk-in freezer um, in the cafeteria. Uh, we jumped on it quickly. We've had a portable freezer outside um, for about a week now. Um, on an emergency procurement basis, we got the company that services it normally to come in and replace a whole bunch of stuff. Um, it's going to be supported by the lunch program financially for that repair. But that being said, if you happen to see a truck there, um, the, the, the project on the auditorium walls of, of screwing the brick to the cinder block has commenced. Um, they expect it to be this week. Weather seems like it's going to be okay and, and cooperate, so they've made good progress. It's going to be, I shouldn't say this week, it could be this week into next week, but it's, they seem like they're on schedule so far this week. They've made good progress. Um, four trees were taken down. Um, I didn't go anywhere near there just in case a tree came near me. I didn't want to be involved with that. So. And those are the, the trees that are by the high school track. Yes, yeah, so the dead trees. Yes. Yeah. The vertically challenged trees. Well, now they certainly. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Um, now more so. Well, there's stumps now. Do we have trees. an update on the, the out for bid for actually fixing the auditorium? That's the coming. Exterior that's wall? coming in. Oh, gosh, was it this Friday or next Friday? It's either this Friday or next Friday. Okay. They're doing. Um, James and I met yesterday. I think I can remember something from yesterday, but that's not going to happen right now. Um, I think it's next Friday, though, which is why I don't think he said tomorrow. And then the review of that, when do we think we would be we able to? turn it around right away. Okay. We're, we're actually hopeful that the, the, the we, with the person who's tying the two walls together told us that he was going to bid on it, um, his equipment would be here, so it would be a, a much quicker turnaround. Great. So if he's, if he's a successful bidder. You know, it would so. be wonderful to stop the rain in that hallway, yeah. uh, in those classrooms. Before the spring. Kind of it sure would. Okay. Um, okay. That, you, have you concluded? That's two things, yep. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Shorter with longer, longer with shorter. <laughs> Moving on to uh, reports from the uh, subcommittees. Communication, uh, we don't have Amanda tonight. Uh, policy, I'm guessing. We're discussed. Yes. I don't, I don't have a meeting scheduled yet, but I will. Budget. And budget, we hit a lot of it. Yep. We, uh, Keith just went over the update on the auditorium wall and the trees that have been removed. Um, facilities, usage, rentals, I think we have this on the agenda a little farther down. Yep. So I, I'm not going to jump into that. And we will have another budget meeting before um, the February 29th next school committee meeting. But At least one. What's that? At least one. At least one, yes. But we're still working on dates. 
Okay. Superintendent evaluation. Yep, I have a lot of update on that. So uh, we were supposed to meet on Monday, uh, but due to a technical glitch, we had to cancel the meeting because the Zoom um, password went out wrong to the public. So unfortunately, at the last moment, we had to cancel it. But we could make some good use of it because uh, we ended up I ended up meeting with Susan. So anyway, um, now we have we met today at 6:30 to go over the final goals and uh, like we now have the document to present so can so someone pull it up please so that we can share with the committee and then what well, we should probably give uh, Sarah and Don a few minutes to yes read it if they want so I, I was thinking we can pull it up and we can read all together no sure we can go through it um, I know it's really well I'm take yeah I mean I, I think all of you should have it but um, it's in there under yeah, but I don't know if uh, it, it it is the updated one, it, right? It's in the folder. It's under revised. It's under R. Okay. So if you're, yeah. Okay. So just go um, through, through that. You might want to think about. Um, this one says there's two that say revised. Yeah, the two that say. Yeah, that's it. why. So yeah, which, which one? Um, I'm not <laughs> sure which one. Is that. <laughs> uh, I don't think someone yellow these. I took the yellow. It says two six revised two six twenty four. Okay. They're both the same. I think. Yeah, they're both. I, I think gotta be the same. Okay. Uh, go they to the, the uh, Susan. Why don't you go to that expand and promote line? You will know which one is the current one <laughs> because that should have, that should be the one. Just from linked twice. twice so that yeah, it looks okay. like it's linked twice. Okay. Like yeah, I'm seeing exactly the same thing. It's not moving. Did you as a subcommittee vote on these? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. There's a couple little typos, but that's because we were cutting and pasting and moving things around a little bit. Yeah, the K, the K around. Yeah. <laughs> you can, I wasn't you can see the typos. I wasn't like gonna the, yes.
Did we not put in that uh, <coughs> middle school and high school thing? We didn't because we felt that it, that's it was not this year, year, like next year. Okay, yeah. okay. recommendations from the equity audit equity audit steering committee me ask and community feedback to improve teaching and learning for students would you consider also adding in curriculum review committees and I know in some ways it's touched upon it by, by putting up on the tap on the top um, working with the assistant superintendent principals curriculum coordinators and staff to establish benchmarks but would you consider including um, curriculum review committee? under that utilized recommendation, which is the two, four, six, eight, one down under action steps in ARCH-3. Yes, just add in um, curriculum review process. So he said. Curriculum review committee. I feel like they, it, Multiple when they make recommendations. <laughs> yeah, many of them, yeah. Because they make recommendations, right? I just want to make sure they sure. feel like their voice is part of um, improving teaching and learning for students, right? Yes, mostly they're going to recommend resources, but yes, mm -hmm. that would come up to capital. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. Sure. or should we, uh, okay, I will then entertain a motion to ad approve and adopt the revised 2023-2024 uh, summative year goals for uh, Superintendent Dr. Casca. Moved by Cynthia. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. That carries five to nothing. Oh, well, it's a go. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. Um, high school, uh, the old business and high school auditorium rental. Well, it's a bundle in the C. Do you want to put that as one? I mean, do you want to? Do, which do you want to do first? You Let's do it all, and then if you have like, an update on the specific sort of. Well, uh, it's all, it all is all. Right. So go right ahead. Um, you can click on either A or C. Um, the uh, um, as we were working, as I was working through all these issues with potentially renting to the auditorium, I did a much deeper dive on all facilities on all facilities within the, the three school districts that I chose that were the most um, comparable to ours. <coughs> and um, of course, I can't even click on the right thing. Um, 
So I looked at Ashland, Medway, and Hockenden just because they're the most similar to our communities, the facilities are the most similar, um, and noticed something which was not, um, which I, when I thought about and, and did more research on, I realized, yeah, it has been 15 years since we looked at this, so um, we haven't raised our rates in, it was 14 years actually, but um, so there was a great disparity basically on market rate for what we were paying, and then when you dig a little deeper and think harder about it, we're paying just under $30 an hour for coverage. Um, you know, we're barely covering that in some of our rentals. So um, basically, I put together a new rental schedule, so on page two, my assumptions are on page one of the memo. On page two of the memo, um, I, I, I grade out the, the basically what the proposals are. Um, and uh, so if you can see in the second section, I'm going to get up just because I just want to squeeze and identify what I'm, what I'm talking about. So in this section right here, which is basically mostly youth sports, um, uh, you can see that we're charging $30 an hour for a gym on weekends when $30 is what I'm paying for my help to come in. So at that point, we're, we're not covering cost of electricity or wear and tear, et cetera. So, um, and again, the, the rates in this scenario were actually higher. Um, I lowered them down a little just because, again, to make a more significant jump this quickly would obviously negatively impact those organizations. Um, you know, it would be obviously for next year, too. They've already had their rentals for this year. Um, so the, the, what I want to do in the first section, and again, this is, I've actually run this through budget subcommittee, just so you know that. Um, what I want to do in this first section here is just add an entry just so that if we, right now there was nothing stating that if we brought in staff on a weekend, if one of the organizations that fit in that top section, they would literally be getting free, a free rental with free coverage. And the, the, the appropriation shouldn't be absorbing costs. It shouldn't be a negative to the, to the school district for somebody using our building. So if they come in when there is nothing else going on in the building, um, if so in other words, they're the only party in there, I'm gonna have to, I wanna be able to charge them the cost for, um, you know, for the staff to come in. Um, the second group, you can see the difference in rates. It's a slight increase in most of the areas. Well, slight increase, all the areas are increased, mostly with slight increase. And then I wanna remove the computer lab just because, we don't really have computer labs per se anymore. I mean, we do have a couple, but they're very specified and they're not ones we would want to rent out. Um, and everybody has a computer. But this was put in place when people were actually coming in and either teaching lessons, doing things in, in a more, it just, it's not appropriate any longer. It's just, it's not the market. Um, this third category is want to eliminate the whole category because there's virtually no groups that ever qualify for it. So it's a, it's a category we may use once a year. It's just, again, to simplify the, the schedule itself. And then the fourth category is where the biggest jump is, and in some cases, a 100% jump, just because we were so far askew from the market. And it's one of the reasons, truthfully, it created issues with us trying to rent out, because it's we're going to be going through all these hoops mm -hmm. and, and bending over backwards, and it's not necessarily benefiting uh, the district. So um, what I'm looking for tonight is for you to approve on this revised schedule. Um, Again, that, that it's gone through and, and was vetted uh, through the budget subcommittee, and I received the anim unanimous support from them on this. So, I just have one question. Yep. So when you say uh, classroom, foyer, mm -hmm. hallway. Yep. So uh, typically, foyers or hallways are not charged. Yes, they are. So not hallways. Yes, they are. Which hallways are charged? They're the not hallway charged. Out, the hallway outside of the field house. We have yeah. people who have rented that. The field house. Oh, so when you say hallway, where, what it's not, you... it's not. It's not the hallway to walk through, as if you were setting yeah, up a stand there and renting mm -hmm. that space. Yeah, that's that's what I thought, because like it's very confusing. Setting up tables in a larger <coughs> hallway. Yeah, hallway. because I mean, if you, if you go, go to the bathroom, you would have to cross the hallway. Right, no, no, that's not correct. Okay, all right, yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Yes. Yeah, we can go at that. Yeah, you can go at that. No bathrooms. Can I ask a question? Thank you. So you were talking about... Building capacity for these uh, nonprofit groups that use does that mean that you potentially have like a step increase of because you were saying it was so out of line that you didn't want to like they've already planned their budgets for the next year so are you planning this as a 
step no, we, to get where you want to be or yes, is this, yes. I, okay. I would expect I would expect that we would look at this again possibly as early again as next year for another ask. five dollars or okay. two dollars or something yep. like that yep. this is not a one-stop move and we're yep. just gonna have to get used to a more frequent review of these right okay so and I, like another question things. is the custodial coverage is twenty nine dollars seventy five cents yep. per hour are you suggesting to increase that or keep it there? That's by contract. That's by contract? Yes. Because they, that is charged almost double by almost all districts. Mm -hmm. so. I, I'm, I'm aware that, that people, many districts, not going to say most, but many districts have their, um, they, they have custodial staff that's on staff for them. That makes, typically they make time and a half or double time depending on the contracts for weekend work. Um, we don't have that. We have we have contracted cleaners yeah. that again we have a negotiated rate with them for coverage. I see. So, you know, it, it's um, I don't want to necessarily make money on that, or mm -hmm. that's not what I'm proposing to do. Right. Um, I, I mean, and, and, and look, right. if you guys say go higher, I'll go higher. I, you know, when I was putting this together, it took me a little while to get comfortable with the numbers I was putting in because in some cases it was such a big jump. That being said. You know, if if and the other reason I don't necessarily want to raise a, raise a custodial rate is because sometimes we have multiple groups in with one custodian, right. mm -hmm. and so I can't. I, if I start putting a higher rate, I'm almost going to feel either obligated to not have multiple groups in, or to try to divide up that custodial rate. Right. So it's it's kind of like for the custodial add-on uh, for weekend coverages. I, I almost treat it like it's like a blended rate, kind of. So if mm -hmm. if you know, as opposed to charging 45 bucks an hour instead of 30. Um, you know, you say that uh, on average, if we have two events, if we have one event, excuse me, it's like we have one and a half people renting it type of thing. Mm -hmm. so I'm doing quick math in my head. Okay. At 9 o'clock at night. 9.34. Um, Thank you. Okay. I didn't have my glasses um, on. We move to, to accept the fee schedule for use of facilities as presented by Mr. Boudet this evening. Second. All in favor, or is there any, all in favor, aye. Um, that passes, uh, four oh, zero. It is ninety. Five zero. Sorry, five zero. I was like, who? What? Oh no. Oh, we lost oh. another one. <laughs> you are messing up the numbers. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm messing up the numbers more than I'll admit. Um, okay, and then what about the high school? I was going to the update there. Um, this would be the schedule. She's been informed that we were going to uh, discuss the schedule tonight, and I'll be we'll be we'll be working on the math. Okay. Perfect. Um, so moving on to uh, the school calendar 2024-2025. Can I just say we're 35 minutes behind, we're missing two members, can we minimize the vote on this? Yeah, no, I, th okay. well, I think there's a lot of work still going on in some okay. of the details because of just where things lay, but I, but I do think that it's important that we set the, the first date. Oh, can we vote the end date at the 14th? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Come on. We, we, we it's can, aspirational. We, will, we, we can no? preliminarily set okay. the end date to be the 18th okay. of, of, of June. And we can revisit And we can revisit it. Yeah. Um, okay. but you can always re-vote, too. I mean, that's what yeah. we want. Right. Mean, like Nobody example, even commented on my dream proposal. Well, that's because that would be the, the so deliberation works. via email, which is uh, no, no, no. subject just, to the OML. No, and, nobody even responded back, like, thanks, Sin. Checking it out. Thanks. Nothing. Yeah, I checked it out. <laughs> It's not Facebook where you just like, you know. I wasn't looking for it. Never mind. You, you get it. Do huh? anything with um, reaching out to families at the moment. We're going to just. No, I thought we. Do we still, I think we still want to have. A, Is that a, something you want to well, Okay. I wasn't but, sure given. But I think importantly, I think it's also teachers maybe first, or not teachers, staff first. So you would like me to still seek feedback? Seek feedback, feedback on, on that's the, what I wanted the, to the February break and, and, and Sure. Uh, and we'll put like it that. back on on February 29th, but at least it can staff. It's supposed to look hot, but it couldn't even just. <laughs> So, so for right now, to be on like here so people could look at. So for right now, it. I, there's all this ether. Like the Facebook says this. That's not what it says. We don't want. It's not my pilot. We've made any different decisions? No, we, we any, haven't. So I just <laughs> wanted somebody to look. I wanted folks to look at. Then they will. And now <laughs> we send the survey out. They, 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 they will. Uh, uh, fine. Um, but I think. Yes. But, but as people plan their their summers, uh, I think it's important that we at least Go set the, the first day of, yes. of school for students. Um, and what's that date? The, the August 27th. And the, uh, you know, preliminary final 180th day or, uh, of uh, June 18th. June 18th. Uh, moved by Dawn. Second. By Sarah. 
all in favor? Aye. Carries five, nothing. Five. I didn't even raise my <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm voting. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yes, you're good. Okay, five nothing. Just giving a sign. Like, the sign of break 24 is pretty impressive. It's very long. Yeah, this this year was really short. You kind of we kind of make up for it, but yeah, it's it's. Yeah, because it's like Thursday, Friday. Yeah, and, and it's hard because we'd be uh -huh. you know no, opening up for like first off. It's like one day. We, we can have we can have a conversation about, about that, but it is. We have a follow up if you. Know. We can have a follow up, but but it is. I just would worry about people not showing because. No, I, I get yeah. that. No. It, it's, 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 uh, it's tricky. It is tricky. Okay, moving on to new business. There is no uh, newsletter, uh, so let's talk about the, the letters to our exact. Can we elected. do the SOI first, please? Why? <sighs> just because. Because I want it that so we can just check it off. Well, we'll get there. Um, so, look, as, if anyone's still watching at home or they're going to watch the replay, um, obviously, we got the Chapter 70 numbers from the state. They were pretty uh, uh, rough at 0.9%, about $80,000. Um, you know, that's lower than what we have been uh, receiving. Um, and it's also significantly lower than Prop 2.5. And, and so that's quite disappointing. And I, I just, so I put together some, some letters to send to our, our state representative, uh, James Arena DeRosa, our state senator, Karen Spilka, as well as the governor. Um, this is the governor's budget, by the way, that is 0.9, basically advocating that, you know, to try to put it out there that that's, uh, you know, pretty low and that we, we, we would like a, a reasonable number. Um, I don't think that um, our state representatives and our state representative and our senator, you know, have done a lot for us. So this is not sort of pointed at, at them, but it is more of a just a fact that they, they should know the numbers. They should should understand, you know, what we're growing at, what um, the town has been able to to provide for us, and how the, the state is just not matching it and is putting more and more of a, of a burden on, on our residents. And, and yes, you know, Holliston does have a high residential tax base, and therefore the, the burden is even more than some other communities. Um, but that should almost be something that is factored in, and, and we should, you know, maybe put, be part of the calculation, or more so part of the calculation. So, um, I, if anyone has any um, changes they'd like to suggest, or if we just want to vote on it, it's up to. I, I wanted to say I wanted to thank you for the work you put into it. I, I appreciate the um, information in here, like the. Chapter 70 has only grown at a 2.2% annual rate over the past two decades and at a 2.3% annual rate in the past 10 years. This has resulted in a greater burden placed upon our residents as these increases are below even Proposition 2.5. I think it's important and it's also something we've done in the past. I, I really appreciate that we're doing this early on as we as we go into the budget season and we have and we're aware of um, deficiencies and I know we did something similar last year on March 2nd we had voted on a resolution um, supporting an increase in special ed circuit breaker funding um, and, and so I, I don't think it's I, I don't find this to be something that we haven't done in the past and I appreciate the work into this and I, I like that it's targeted too in terms of going right to the representatives. I know that often we'll kind of copycat resolutions done by other school committees um, like the one we did last year on the um, circuit breaker funding and in that one we had um, talked about how the, it was insufficient reimbursement, it's undermining our ability of Halston and other districts across the state to provide for all students. So I, I do appreciate this and, and the language in it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just think it's sometimes, you know, people will put together a budget and they'll have numbers in there and they won't necessarily know, understand the impact or sort of what it represents as far as a, a percentage of basis or, you know, percentage of the towns, you know, spending or what. So it, it's it's good to just sort of, you know, sort of educate almost the, our representatives as well. I would almost prefer that it be put in a format more of a resolution because this one comes off as a little bit more accusatory than it is about the state of, I think it's important for us to explain the state of where we are in Holliston and the impacts that it had, but I also am very cognizant of the support that we have gotten from our representatives and that we will continue to request from them. So I just think wording wise, I just, I don't, I don't necessarily 
yeah, I think support it's some of the up. wording around it. Maybe, so I maybe just the would... governor one was a little more pointed, but this one is more like, hey, can you can you help us? The governor's budget was was awful, you know, like but throw throw uh, help us. For but people to understand, yeah. in terms of the chapter seventy eight, kind of roughly, what what's the decrease? What do you mean? Um, right, but we'll see. The chapter seventy eight is up nine point nine percent. Right. Great. Which is below the 2.3 percent that is in the last 10 years. Yeah. I'd also point out that I went back and looked, and our enrollment is only down 1.9 percent total over right. the last 10 years, or about 0.2 percent a year. So, if you say, well, our you know, our, our, are also our enrollment is down, that really, you know, it, maybe you'd add a little bit to sort of, you know, right. pro forma them, but it's it's not going to get us to the 3.2 percent that the town has been contributing uh, to to the school's budget, and it's you know not going to be meeting inflation. But I think real, also just having real numbers are a little more impactful for them to understand that percentages are significant. But understanding what that means in real dollars, I think, is I don't know, eighty thousand dollars. I mean, but would have so you just used a lot of percentages throughout the entire document without saying this represents a million dollars deficit. Whatever you didn't actually say that part. So. I mean, there's deficit. I mean, I'm just like a decrease. A decrease in a significant amount, is, yes. So your suggestion is to add the decreased dollar amount to it? Yes, to dollar amounts. And I, like I said, I think that this do, these kind of letters do better in a more right of a resolution like standpoint from the coming from a school committee. <clears throat> so I'm torn on it, Cynthia. I hear what you're saying, but I also think it's important to stake our position and be specific about it and be specific to people who can actually affect change and what I, f I feel like in, I mean, how many of these resolutions have we voted on that are somewhat more, it's, they're more generic, we'll often cop, you know, we're doing a similar resolution to other school committees. Um, so there's power in numbers that way. But at the same time, why not do But those are also very specific to our numbers to, in terms of what's, how it, the actual impact is to our district. Right, but even the fact that MBSC was putting together a prop two and a half teach and learn because many districts had asked for it and were in this type of precarious budget situation, there could be resolutions in the future. We might even start one, but I think it's important enough and different from what I've seen in budget seasons in the past few years that I'd like to put out a targeted letter to people who can actually impact change, not just a generic resolution about it and hope that other committees are doing I mean, the same. Here, here's because of the sorry. timing, too. I think the timing is important. Mm -hmm. We've got to get the word out and have these conversations. Um, you know, I'm open to maybe, instead of deep disappointment, disappointment, but we, I, I am. I'm disappointed that the numbers are going to... Um, but also the disappointment is in difficult. the governor's budget. It's not what our representatives have done. Not, our representative hasn't done anything yet. They haven't. So we're just right. getting, trying to get ahead of the curve and say, hey, we, you know, this is this is a, 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 a tough number. I mean, if you if you want another number, what I can say is if, if the uh, state had grown Chapter 70 at the same rate the town has grown our appropriation, we'd have $800,000 more of Chapter 70 today over 10 years. I would like something specific like well, that. Into maybe that we need to do way. a little more work on this. Well, no, I want to get this out. If you want to make some suggestions, then I can. Yeah, this one is like, you know, to James, like, you know, uh, Representative James and um, Senator Spilka is different from governors for the first paragraph because in this, yeah. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. You have so it's kind of like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I click on Spilka, it says governor. Mm -hmm. But um, I just noticed budget. that. In your proposed budget. Yeah. So. I must have say, I, I must have yeah. saved those. Uh, I just those no, oh, you know what? I, I, uh, I saved that down before I changed it. Uh, oh, yeah. Senator Spookus is basically the same as James is, okay. so, as, as a representative of uh, Arena Durso. <laughs> no, we you won't get a positive response that way. No. no. Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure. But <laughs> Senator Spookus is, is, is almost exactly the same. I think basically just changed the, the one word, which is House to Senate. And, you know, yeah, and, so, yeah, you, you pasted the. Yeah. Yeah. I, I well, I'm word. not prepared to vote for it in its current state. As a comp and, I and, and I don't think it's good practice for the school committee to vote for things every time the first time they see something. It's just not. I'm worried, though, Cynthia, if we drag this out three What is weeks, dragging it out? It's just the next meeting. 
because they need to act now if anything's going to change in time to not have difficult decisions. They are happening and they'll be happening all the way through June 30th. I sent this out to the committee on Monday specifically because I knew you were going to have an objection to a a short, you know, reading cycle. You've you've had three days. I did did read it. And And I actually gave you and I gave you my feedback on it as well. And so you you feel free to to, to vote against it. And I just said that. So I was saying I'm not comfortable voting or I will vote no. That's fine. But I don't want my letter attached, my name attached to it because I'm not voting for it. I I'm voting no. I feel strongly on budget that I'd like to do something now to help to help with this situation as we're you know we're running out of time, right? So I, I want to get something out to the representatives. I could see a compromise position being agreeing to the letters to both representatives and then working on a resolution. Um, but, Regarding, you know, sp- more specific to the governor, um, and having that prepared by the 29th, and at the same time, consider reaching out to other school committees so they could join on a resolution as well. But I think it's very important for us to be reaching out to our state reps. We, we could hold the governor's. I mean, it's not going to do. I mean, that that's the least impactful one. Okay. Anyway, I'm so gonna... I'm going to move. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we approve the letters to James Starina and Karen Spelka, but the Spelka has to be is so the, as amended yeah, to, 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 to it's going to be the same email uh, as as going to to uh, Rep. Rita Rosa just with Senate in it. So is there a second? I second. Okay. Any more debate? All in favor? All opposed? That carries four to one. Um, just record it is going to go out from the committee because it is an action of the committee, so your name will be on yeah. the, the letterhead. But um, you, you stand in the record and will be in the uh, the minutes as, as opposing it. Um, does anyone want to spearhead writing the resolution and reaching out to the, or, or finding out if there's a similar resolution out there? No. Okay. Um, I, I can do it, or you can do it. Why don't we talk about it in budget we, subcommittee? Or, or, or we can ask, see if Amanda wants to take charge okay. of this for part of communications. Yeah. Okay. Not to volunteer her for it, but um, also volunteering her for it. Um, okay. Great. Let's see, where's my agenda? Okay, now now we're going to go on to the Holliston High School SOI uh, vote. Um, and then was sort of followed right there by the accelerated roof repair vote, which I think is also in the language is called an SOI right or so something. But it, this one I couldn't access. Yeah, it's blocked now, but I could access it earlier today. Which one? Um, share it, I SOI vote. SOI vote. I can still get to it. Yeah, you're all on. I think it's just the. the the, the, um, is the, the, the resolution that the, the we header to... uh, is the the old header. <clears throat> is it in Google Drive, but not linked in the no, agenda? I just clicked on the agenda. Why when I clicked on it? I, I know I looked at this before, but I think I looked at it. It's showing. No, and now no. it's up. Okay. Good. Okay. I just took the old one. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I want to vote on this now, today, and then, uh, you know, send it to the, uh, to the select board for their vote. But I would also like to just put it on the agenda for the 29th again, just to see if we have seven of us here, just so we can sort of hopefully get a, get a 7-0 vote. I don't want to slow the process up, but obviously it would be uh, ideal if we had all members um, voting. But, I mean, with... Uh, with everything going on and illnesses and stuff, it, that, may, that may not be you, possible you, you for, 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 for many months to, to, or, or ever. But uh, um, so, having convened in an open meeting, I'm, I'm, we have to change a lot of the language here. Like, I mean, yeah. Um, just, can, do we have editing? Yep. Yeah. Dated. When's the date? I haven't done it yet, so. All right, so you just want us to sort of, what, 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 what do you need from us tonight then to, to solidify this and get I it moving? If you could read the, um, the resolution in the priority areas. Okay. And then um, I mean, April 14th was, I think it was April 15th, it was due last year, but 
My goal would be to get it out sooner than later. I just don't know for sure what date we'll get them. Okay. Do we have to say that it's dated? Yeah, actually, I think you do. They want to see in, they want to see in the minutes um, that this was voted. That's why they're so that's why they're so specific in their okay, language. What date should we put it in? Well, you know what? If you want to wait until after the February 29th, you can put like a March first or something? No. Or well, you could do the February 29th. No. no. The select well, board was asking for us to have this in February. Okay. Uh, but they voted for it in well, February. Well, that's not, I mean, I... No, I know, but like we have other stuff coming on the pike that we have to deal well, with. The only issue is the select board's not meeting next week. They're not meeting next week. They have a meeting on Saturday. Joy. Yes, all day. I'm on, I'm on their agenda for for the... Uh, why? It's so the repair. They have to vote on that too. Oh, okay. And that's March first, so I can't um, wait. Yeah. They're making people come in on a Saturday. So are you doing yes, February nineteenth or February twenty sixth? February twenty sixth, maybe. Oh, February nineteenth is President's Day. <laughs> yes, and then I was talking about that week at some point. I have to so, get it on the agenda. No, they're, 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 they're not meeting that week. They're off that whole next week. They're meeting this Saturday, and that's the next, next, the next week, meeting. Next week, they're not meeting at all? Correct. And the meeting is two full no, It's not this Saturday. It's next Saturday. It's the 17th. It's no, the, it's Saturday. They're meeting the 10th. He's there. Well, they moved. They they're meeting the 10th. They they're are? They're not meeting then off. They're taking that whole next week off, meeting after uh, vacation. That's oh. February 26th. So can I date this February 26th? Is that what we're doing? No, you. they have their own separate vote. You, yeah, you make a vote, they make a vote. Our date is has to be. Want the second date to be. Hold on, I'm trying to today's find out. Give date. me a second. Just put in today's date. No, no, the, you, have to, you have to put a date. Your, it's the date that the form. Oh, that you're submitting it. Yes. yes. And I haven't done April, it yet. April 1st? No, March. Yeah, dude, I would, I would pick a date in April just to be safe. Uh, what? They want it sooner. No. We, no. Okay. The submission is not the issue. It's the submission date is the issue. Okay. So it has to be by. Can we say it has to be dated or does it have to be say it as a form? I would have to date it whatever date you can. Okay. Whatever date you Well, if we know it's getting voted on by the select board on February 26th and we're convening again on February 29th, why can't we... Say March 15th or March 14th. Or, yeah, right? well, it doesn't matter what day, as long as it's in before April, whatever right. it is. 12th, 14th, okay. 17th, whatever the hell it is. Pi day. All right. Yeah. March 14th. Or we do the Ides. We're going with Pi. Pi. <laughs> pi sounds good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kimes' birthday. Yeah. Okay. Yes, All right, so. Uh, we'll just, you want me to read it quickly? So, resolved having convened in an open meeting on February 8th, 2024, prior to the SOI submission closing date. The school community of the town of Holliston, in accordance with the charter bylaws and, and ordinances, have voted to authorize the superintendent of schools to submit to the Mass School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated March 14th, 2024, for Holliston High School, located at 370 Hollis, 370 Hollis Street, Holliston, Mass, 01746, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority area number one, building jeopardizes student health, poor health, and learning environment. Priority area number four, prevention of severe overcrowding expected to result from increased enrollment. Priority five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating, and ventilation systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy-related costs in school facilities. Priority area seven, replacement or of or addition two obsolete buildings in order to provide a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements. And hereby further specifically acknowledge, acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Billing Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application. The awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Billing Authority or commit or commits the town of Holliston to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Billing Authority. So, does someone move that? Uh, moved by Cynthia. Second by Don. So, if we change the wording to say that we expect them to, that, we, that, we, that they have to accept it, does that you can, mean? You can say whatever you want, but that's what the trash is for. <laughs> All's in favor? Aye. That carries five to nothing. Um, I just want to say that um, as for our last meeting, I did reach out to Senator, Senator President Spilka's office. Um, uh, to ask for another letter in, in favor of our SOI. And I heard back from her district director, um, Susan Nichols, 
um, within like an hour of emailing her, and then she was able to provide us with a, with a letter. Um, however, there was no date on it, and I didn't see that until this morning. So she's just revamping it, and then she'll have that sent out to us. But it'll be here, obviously, in time for our submission. But she was very enthusiastic and, you know, wants to help us to move forward with this process. So my, my thanks to uh, Senate President Spilka's office for um, jumping on this for us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So I will want, I'll upload that when I Yes. Yeah. Great. So we're, we're going forward. Let's, let's keep going. So on to the uh, school roof um, rapid repair program. This is also technically going to look be called an SOI submission, but just to be clear, we are not asking for a, a new uh, middle school. Uh, Keith, you decided to go forward with just one building rather than I spoke than two. with I spoke with MSBA directly, yeah. um, and they, while they said we could. One of their criteria, the, the woman told me, one of their criteria is, and I actually, one of their criteria is the age of the roof. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we do have documentation saying one roof is, is, you know, better than the other. And they said, well, age is one of our criteria. So I took that to mean that if we put in both, they may go to the wrong building. Um, as well as I asked her specifically, um, because you apply by school, not by building. So. Um, I asked her, "Would you? Do I have to do two applications then? Because it's two schools in one building?" Or she says, "We can't be the only place that has two. You know, she says, I, she says she's never run across that. So she was looking that up, and I haven't heard back on that yet. But at this point, um, the town wouldn't be funding the whole shebang anyway, and she fully expects this to be a very robust period since they took last year off. Because they have also they have like two years worth of inventory to move through, mm -hmm. so I'm not saying she says you can apply both if you want, and I just there was not a heavy endorsement. I'm not I'm not mm -hmm. trying to talk you out of it. It's like I, yes you are, but okay. so so that was that piece. Um, just for a little other other information, the vote will be in October of 24 for this. So again, it's not it, this. I don't know if this is something that. Well, this would be a budget subcommittee discussion as well, whether we want to put forward a number for fall, for a spring town meeting or fall town meeting for this. The only we'd have 90 days after the um, after we would get accepted into this to uh, uh, to set aside money or to get a vote from the town for doing a um, for doing a, a schematic design for this. So that's the window you have to. So you know this is this is like two years out we anyway. You know, well, no, we would, we could just, we could put, we could have some money set aside the fall town meeting for a schematic designer for the whole kit and caboodle. I mean, well, we don't we have to access it. We might not know about fall town meeting for we And if we don't know, we, we just return the money back to the town uh, anyway. Or we put in, I mean, I mean, this is a further discussion on whether we want to wait from, we may not get accepted anyway. So do, is this something we want to wait from MSBA or do we want to keep careening forward on our own? We'll start asking the teachers to send in yeah. all those pictures. That won't help. <laughs> Okay. Uh, does anyone have uh, any questions or concerns about voting for this now for the Robert Adams Middle School? Does it, mm, is it going to cause problems for our? Nope. I asked that question. They're on two separate tracks. Okay. So all the accelerator repair ones go in one bucket, all the core program ones go in another. Um, you know, and it's, they're just separate tracks. Do they tell you about how many they have? Backed up in the last two years. They don't because they didn't accept any last year, yeah, so they, they don't didn't. know. But how many applied? Do we know? They, they, they didn't apply. apply. The <laughs> they were not allowed to. So we're all going to be we're going to be in the same category as everyone, even yes. though right. might have applied last. And our and our roof is probably not as old as others. In, just in all honesty, yeah. just you know, it's, it's again, because our roof has only been eligible for the last four years now. So, okay. all right. So three years. We need to read this too. Yes, every word. <sighs> Are we submitting how many different places leak? Like, like as part of the application, are we able to? Leaks are, di leaks are dynamic. I know <laughs> leaks are dynamic, but they, they happen in multiple places we, that we can we will identify. Be, we'll be adding reports that we have, um, have already done to the process. So, and some of the reports are actually very helpful with regards. So I have to get like information on square footage of the roof and I mean, you know, kind of materials, old. things like that. There's a whole bunch of details that I have to put into this, um, into their form 
um, to submit this. So it's so lots of specificity, like leaking in 16 different places. No, there's no specificity no. on that. The roof is no different. The, the application for the roof is no different than windows. They're no different than boilers. Okay. Can you email out the the uh, submission before you submit it? So that, I, mean, I know we won't be able to meet on it because we're not meeting to the. No, we might because it's getting submitted February 29th, right? Right, yep. so we don't meet until February 29th. Yeah, so. but I, I can still pass it out. But budget, so. okay. we will. Okay, well, we budget, yeah, we can talk yeah. about the budget. Okay. okay. So, resolved, having convened in an open meeting on February 8th, 2024, prior to the SOI submission closing date, the school committee of the town of Holliston, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated February 29th, 2024, for the Robert H. Adams Middle School, located at 323 Woodland Street, Holliston, Mass, 01746, which describes and explains the following deficiencies in priority categories for which the application may be submitted for the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority area number five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating and ventilation systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy related costs in a school facility, specifically restoration of the Robert H. Adams Middle School roof. And hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application. The awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the town of Holliston to filling uh, an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Move by Cynthia. Thank you. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Um, that carries five to nothing. All right. The last item on our agenda is um, the Outdoor Learning Alliance has a proposal for some courtyard work, and while uh, we probably need, might need a little bit more conversation about the, the larger picture right now, what they want is a um, essentially a vote to accept a, the donation of pruning work and the, the, the money from them to do the pruning work um, from from Simpkins uh, to uh, uh, prune some. Uh, what is so it, pear so trees and there's like part there's, of there's the two tree. different pieces. So there's yeah, the is blocking the school's name right. in the front of the building. Yeah, and then some stump grinding there, and then pruning and maintenance. Um, it's the email in your folder. Yeah, um, yeah, I have it. it. And the reason this is coming before you tonight too, this part of it is that um, they're hoping to do this work over February vacation or on a weekend in February. Yeah. There's additional proposals from them, and I know people may have questions about the additional proposals. So I think the probably the most prudent thing would be to go ahead and vote on this piece tonight and then you know we can talk to them and get more information on, on the next pieces but yeah the other thing that I just wanted to say was that I know that they had money that they had gotten from ARPA for the Placentino or I think it was generally courtyard whatever space outdoor mm -hmm. learning alliance space so I'm thinking that there are still some funds that are I know that there are still some funds in that in that um, piece um, but yeah, I'm happy to vote for the tree removal and new trees. This I can't even make sense of the the, I the, yeah. the drawing. I'm like, and where I, are I, where I, are I, they? I, I don't. I followed up with some questions. Sorry, again, just, we weren't even sure where on the property. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, where is this um, piece of where so is this? I, what I would say is, hold on that. We can at least tell you the tree the tree is in the front. Yes. And where yeah, the pruning is that. happening, and yeah. the rest of this, I think we wait and, and decide. Right. I, I was thinking they were meaning like from where the lunchroom is and goes out. Outside. That's what yeah. I thought they were meaning because if they're talking about the same spot that the Parks and Rec was doing a whole oh, thing on, so then I, that's... I ran some of those questions to ground. It's not the same okay, spot. Okay. But let's wait on that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm going to do motion by John to approve for the the pruning. And yeah, the pruning and the in new in the tree. Yeah. The only thing I would like to say is, I mean, I think that. Well, I think we should approve this and have it go forward. Make sure it gets done in February. We do have a DPW that might be able to do some of this and then save the the PTO money where clearly it seems like they, they have uh, a, need, a lot of needs from, from teachers in town. So more if, coordination on the next Well, we appreciate yeah. the donation. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm just yeah. you know, just make, before we, we go and do the work, maybe just run, run down and see if there's anything else that we can get just to, but I think that it's very generous. Uh, it looks like the, the uh, Simpson Street Service is going to discount it by about 50%, so that okay. is always nice. So, so yes. motion by Don, was there a second? Yes. Okay. All's in favor? It carries. 
five. It's nothing. I know Mr. Boudet isn't a big fan of taking down healthy trees, but in this particular case, it was blocking. Not. It was blocking this, the, the front of the sign for Robert Adams Middle School. Or buy a new one. I mean, for okay. the cost you're going to spend on taking the tree down, you could buy a new one, but, you know, that's fine. You would well, what, I mean, rather move the tree? No, 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 he doesn't no, want to. No, they're yeah. they're health. Well, you know, they're healthy trees, so we don't really like to take down healthy trees if we right. don't have. We have accepted the donation. No, we I get it. We I not, just, we're only, I'm just saying we've not approved. The, I mean, that's still sort of in your purview as assistant superintendent for sure. plans and operations. Okay. I'll accept that. So we have approved it. If you would like to make it work with. Yep. The PTO and the Andrew Learning Alliance okay. to, to, to figure out a different okay. way. I, I am in favor of, of, okay. of looking into that. Did you make that proposal about moving the sign to them? Um, I spoke with Barbara this week. Okay. Oh. And were they receptive to the proposal to move the sign? Barbara describes herself as a tree hugger. So. Um, so is there an idea that you could prune the tree and move the sign? We can. Say I'm certainly we can have a chat with Leo. We can. What we can do about with regards to the tree. The and to be clear, these are your buildings, your grounds, so you. I mean, if you don't want these trees cut down, figure figure out something else. We've just accepted the gift that that's the, the best way that that is to go okay. forward. Well, appreciate I, it. But, okay. I, I don't, you know. <laughs> I was going to say, I think that, you know, yeah, I don't know that Mr. Jordan would agree. I think he wants the trees gone from that spot for whatever reason. I, I'm not. But I'm, I'm not getting it. But you, whatever you Keith, guys figure Keith it out. And, and, and Dr. Kuska, I'm sure, are capable of, 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 of figuring Coming it out. Dr. Jordan some, and whatever. at 10:08. There was you know. some issue, and I don't remember what it is anymore. But you guys were good. The gift is accepted. The work can be done. Right. Pending. At the very least, there needs to be pruning. At least, so. very least, there needs to be pruning. Can I just one second go back yeah. to the SOI submission? Yes. Did you make the, Cynthia? Who made? Yeah, it? I made the motion. And Dawn, you seconded. Yes. yes. Okay. Just want to clarify. Okay. Point. We'll get all that I'll figure out. Okay, so that done? does bring us to the end of our uh, of our yeah. regular session. Our next meeting will be February 29th. It is a leap year, everyone, so just remember that. Um, so <laughs> pretend like it doesn't exist. I, 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 I will now accept a motion to adjourn from open session into like executive session, uh, from which we will not return for the purposes of discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining. Uh, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and chair, the chair so declares and is related to strategy related to collective bargaining with the HFT. Additionally, pursuant to MGL it's like, uh, it's, um, 30A, 21A3 to discuss strategy uh, with respect to threatened litigation against the district by a district employee. Sorry. So, so, thank you. So I have a second. Second by Don. This does require a roll call vote. Uh, Minnie? Yes. Uh, Sarah? Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Don? Yes. And yes, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone.